podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. The show originally aired on the Premier Network Saturday, May 29th, 2021. This is episode 1800. Enjoy. This episode of the Tech Guy is brought to you by Udacity. Gain in demand tech skills in as little as three months with Udacity's part time online tech courses. Visit udacity.com slash twit and get 75% off any program with the code twit75. Offer ends June 30th, 2021. And by Nureva. Getting your audio ready for meetings back in the office. Nureva Audio is designed for distancing. It automatically adapts to new room configurations, so you're ready for the new normal and whatever comes next. Learn more at Nareva.com slash twit. Well, hey, 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 how are you today, Leo Laporte, the tech guy? Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. We talk about smartphones. We talk about smartwatches. Got the new iPad. We could talk about that. 8888-ASK-LEO is my phone number, 888-827-5536. That's toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Memorial Day weekend in the U.S. So uh, this will be a good day to uh, enjoy the show. 8888-ASK-LEO. If, uh, if you hear something on the show and you, uh, you want to keep track of it, um, it's easy. You don't have to write anything down. We have a website for you. Wow, how how twentieth century is that? <laughs> Why it's like nineteen ninety five all over again. The website is techguylabs dot com, and it's free and it's easy to use. There's no sign up. There's a search, and every show is there. All one thousand eight hundred of them. Yes, this is episode eighteen hundred. Thanks to my friend Retcon Five, who sent me a bottle of eighteen hundred something. Cristalan, Cristalino. I will not be uh, imbibing that during the show, of course, but uh, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Very nice of you. Um, so if you go to the website, techilabs.com, you'll see each show has its own page. Each page is divided into three hours, one, two, and three. Each hour divided into four segments, one, two, three, and four. That's how the show is organized. You can go to any part of that and find what you want. We even, not only do we put text up there, thanks to James DeRuvo writing this all down, I also, uh, I also uh, put audio and video from the show afterwards. So uh, if you missed it, you can hear it. 1,800. So I got a... <laughs> I got, a, I got a snail mail. Talking about another outmoded thing. Not just websites. Snail mail now. From, oh boy, it looked pretty urgent. Official mail from uh, domain listings. And uh, maybe you've gotten this, and I just wanted to reassure you. It's addressed to techguylabs.com. Returned by June 26th. $228.00. Please remit payment to address by June 26th. Annual website domain listing. I guess I have to do this every year, yeah? Now, you might look at this and go, wow, I guess this is my renewal for my website. It is not. It is not. This is not, you know, and they put it here, in the, but you, you might miss it. It's a little bit less dark than the, you must pay now. And they even, very, they put an envelope in. And a little detachable payment coupon, so it makes it very... It looks like a bill, doesn't it? Credit card number, all that. Looks like a bill. But there in the... In this, this is not a bill. This is a solicitation. You are under no obligation to pay the amount stated above unless you accept this offer. It really is just a... We are, you, you'd have to read this, but I could see why... I mean, they, they make it look like you owe them. Doesn't that look like a bill? Like, if I don't pay that, maybe nobody will be able to go to my website anymore, techguylabs.com. I think they probably got stung by people saying, you're a scam, so they put this little in thing. You're not obligated to do this. You're not. This is not your domain listing. This is, uh, I'll tell you what this is, junk mail. So don't, I, I only, I, I only mention this because I'm sure if you have a website, you're going to get this. Because, you know, one of the things about websites is the address for the website is a public record. 
that's the way the domain registration system works. A lot of domain registrars, you know, if you go to Hover.com or GoDaddy, GoDaddy will charge you for it. Hover gives it to you for free, but they'll offer something called Who is Privacy? <laughs> you know, I understand that if 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 you weren't raised in this, surrounded by it all the time, it would be very confusing. Like, what does that mean? Who is privacy? Who is pri what are you asking me? <laughs> what it really is is there is a directory of all the domain names and the addresses and phone numbers associated with that, and you can look it up with a with a system called Who Is, like Who Is dot com. Oh. Who is privacy means that they obscure that information. In effect, they put in the, the public record a, 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 a different company name, address, and phone number that then forwards it on to you so that nobody will then have from you, you know, from your record, your personal address. I use the business address because, you know, I don't, that's a public address. I don't mind if anybody knows that in the business phone number. But, uh, that's why you might want to use that because if you're using your home address and your cell phone number, business number, you may not want to have that publicly record. And that's who these guys, you know, they just go and they they scrape all the addresses and they send them all this. And I figure they probably get, you know, most people go, well, I don't know. What is that? Throw it away. But I bet you one or two percent pay two hundred twenty eight dollars to be in a directory. Nobody, nobody looks at. What do you think the most important directory for finding websites is? Scratch my head. What could it be? What could it be? It's go called Google. You don't pay anything to be on Google, but you would be paying $228 to be. I tore it up so I don't know their address anymore. <laughs> Domainlistings.com or something. Why would I pay 220 bucks to be on a directory nobody ever heard of? And certainly nobody uses, by the way, I went there and there's lots of like, lots of people on there. Yeah, domainlistings.directory. Domains listing, domainlistings.directory. Oh yeah, that's the first place I go when I want to find out, you know, who you, what your website is. But I, I saw a lot of companies there, which means they paid law firms and stuff that paid 228 bucks to be in a directory nobody looks at. Nice. What does Google charge to be uh, to be in the, their directory? Nothing. Okay, just it was just a little tip, just a little you know something to remind you when you get this because you you know most of us if you have a website you're going to get it you can ignore it it's not it's not real. In fact, if you Google <laughs> domain listings, if you start typing into Google domain listings, the first thing that it says domain listings scam. <laughs> It's not a scam because they say very clearly on there, uh, just, you don't need to do this. But nobody reads that. Obviously, otherwise there wouldn't be so many people listed there. Or maybe, maybe they just uh, put people there just to look like somebody paid them money. I don't know. That's possible too. My, when I was a kid, my dad, as a professor, you know, a, in the in the field of uh, paleontology, well known, I guess, wrote some books. Every year, we'd get this "Who's Who." You've heard of "Who's Who." This solicitation from "Who's Who." You have been selected because of your eminence to be in "Who's Who." Oh, wow, I always wanted to be in "Who's Who." There's a kids probably go, "What's what?" Who's who? You know, who's who? <laughs> uh, and if you read the fine print, it costs, yeah, something like $228 to be listed in who's who. And I guess anybody who wants to pay for who's who can be in who's who. I can't remember if my dad did it or not. I think, you know, it reminds me a little bit of that wonderful movie, A Christmas Story, when uh, the guy gets a major award, right, in the big wooden crate. It's a woman's leg lamp <laughs> but he's so excited because it's a major award and uh and this is how they this is how they get you there was an actual who's who some time ago it started in 1849 but 
I don't think this is the same who's who that sends out the thing. I guess they forgot to trademark who's who. Who? And <laughs> so I don't think it's the same one that sends out the thing saying, you want to be in our who's who? So don't fall for either one of those. It's one of the things that's really true about the Internet is there's nothing new. All the scams on the Internet existed before the Internet, except maybe Bitcoin. That didn't exist. Dogecoin didn't exist. But all the other ones existed and have just been moved to the, to the new medium. 8888-ASK-LEO. There you go. That's your uh, consumer uh, advocacy uh, segment for the show. 888-827-5536. Let's talk high tech. Uh, whatever's on your mind, Apple's got a big event coming up June 7th. We can uh, talk about uh, what, what might happen there. If you're, This would be a bad time to buy any Apple stuff because they're going to announce new stuff almost certainly in a, a week from Monday. And, uh, you know, you'd be maybe disappointed if you found out that the stuff you bought, uh, this has happened to me so many times. It's actually, actually, it's my trademark. <laughs> Leo will buy it right before the new one comes out. People send me emails saying, hey, could you please buy the new, the, uh, the Mac Mini so that they'll put out a new one, please? So don't do as I do. Do as I say. Do not buy any Apple stuff now. Wait. It's only a week. You can wait. Uh, little Tom Jones to introduce the lady call screener. <laughs> I did not choose this song. I just want everybody to understand. I have nothing to do with this. It's uh, it's uh, it's totally uh, between Professor Laura, our musical director, who is also a lady, and Kim Schaffer. Nobody's taking me out and flaunting me right now. <laughs> Flaunt you like a lady. I can guarantee you that. Do you think Especially Tom Jones with... could get away with that act today, or I think he probably could. Uh, yeah, know. probably. I don't know. There's still a few of those fans left. Yeah. Just wear some tight pants and everything. <laughs> the world is yours. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Tom Jones. I, I feel like to, I uh, certainly I think it's appropriate. We should be very cautious. Hey, Laura's playing it. It's got nothing That's to do with That's why I'm you. saying I have nothing to do with this. So that they don't think I'm somehow harassing you because yeah. I have ultimate respect for you. I don't even see your gender. I don't know what you are. <laughs> You could be, I don't know if you're a lady or what. I don't know, even know what your pronouns are. I'm just saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a and topic. I'm, and I'm how that's many feet away? How many feet away you're am I You're in another from? room. I'm in another room that's locked. Behind closed doors. <laughs> just want everybody to know that. But I do have a lot of respect for Kim Shepherd because you are the front line. You're the, the defensive line here. You take the calls. They come in screaming in at you at 100 miles an hour. You take them, you field them, and then you pass them off to me with a little light lob, which is Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and hopefully they don't throw you, you a curveball. <laughs> well, sometimes they do. That's true. Who should I start with? You? Let's go to Eric in Hollywood. I think he's got a laggy laptop. A laggy laptop. Thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Hello, Eric. Don't... Leo Laporte, the tech guy. What? Hello? Oh, no. He went away. I got, I got, I, I he went away. Oh, something bad's happening. Something bad's happening when I press the button. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm getting punished now for what I said. So I still see Eric. On, now he's on line two. But when I press on air, John, should I reboot my phone? <laughs> okay, reboot my phone. Because, well, will this hang up on everybody? Let me try one more. If I it, it, right now it, the next person who should go on is Reed in Atlanta, Georgia. But what I think is going to happen is it's it's going to nope. Yep, hung up on Reed. So <laughs> reboot. <laughs> yeah, because that's something. It's, here comes here comes John. So the phone system, just parenthetically, uh, uh, is a computer, as as most phone systems are these days. Uh, we use a Telos system, Telos VX which a lot of radio stations use. It connects to a complicated trunk system. Yeah, you have to reboot that too. Just unplug it. I think you have to, it's normal then. You have to unplug it down there, John. That's what I always do. Uh, so it's, it, it's connected into a uh, VoIP system that connects to a trunk system. And the trunk line 
is a special line that the phone... I don't... Does a phone company do this anymore? I don't think there's a phone company involved anymore. It's Telepacific, right, John? That's the phone coming in? Uh, TPX now. TPX, they're called now. So they have... They run this thing that, that can handle hundreds or thousands of calls at any given time. So now it's rebooted, but I don't know what I should do. You should call? Should I try? I'll try Eric. Hello. Are you Eric? I am. It yeah, worked. It we worked. rebooted. Thank yeah, you for yeah. your uh, patience, everybody. I apologize. Thank you, John, for rebooting. <laughs> what can I do for you, Eric? Thank you, Leo. Appreciate everything. Um, I have an HP laptop. Now it's older, and I'm sure the first thing everyone would say is, hey, get a new one. But it's built like a tank, like the Lenovo's, and I can take it apart and clean out the heat sink. I can do everything. I like it. And... There's a lot to be said for that. You know, in modern laptops, everything's glued in. There no, you know, they put the RAM on the motherboard in a lot of cases, so you can't upgrade it. I mean, there really is. It's there's a lot to be said for these old laptops that you could disassemble and and fix. Yeah, um, same problem as I had when I had a spinning drive. I, I upgraded to a SSD, a Evo um, Samsung. Good, good SSD. choice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I was good to you. And. Um, also, I, it's, it's maxed on a RAM. I've got 8 gigs. That's what it can hold. That's fine, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was slow before, and I kind of blamed it on the uh, on the drive, the spinning drive. And so I went up to the SSD. It still lags. It's, it, it, what The general question I have is, and I may be all wet and all wrong on this, but if it could it's an older laptop, could it, if it had to be something, and it's not the RAM or the, SS, the SSD's new, uh, could it be the motherboard or the CPU as being something wrong with this? Well, you were smart to um, replace the hard drive because usually when a Windows system lags, it's because of a hard drive that's having a hard time. It can't, it's, you know, it, it's hard to read and so forth. But you've replaced it with a very fast hard drive. Uh, and presumably when you did that, you formatted, reinstalled everything, or did you just copy the old hard drive onto the new one? I let my computer guy I've known for years do it. I mean, so it's possible it yeah. there's some malware or something running in the background that is slowing you down as well. And if you just, you know, ideally when you did that upgrade, you would have reinstalled Windows, started from scratch to eliminate anything else that might have slowed it down. Now you've got to figure out if that's what's slowing it down could just be how old is this old computer? Oh, it's got to be 10 years old. Yeah, it could be that, it, you know, it's an older processor. It's not keeping up. Um, I'll get, uh, we're going to do this off the air because we're run, as you can hear, running out of time. Scott Wilkins is coming up, but I'll give you some uh, tips for how to figure out if there's something going on. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So, unfortunately, that rebooting the phone took up just as just the right amount of time that I could explain all this. So, sure. so. Um, yeah, since you copy, since he probably, and that's what I, I mean, you know, the the obvious thing to do is they, they, you know, when you get the SSD to use a copy, bit copy utility that just copies the old drive over. But maybe it was the old drive stuff was, so one thing it might be worth doing is starting from scratch, like erasing the Samsung and put installing Windows 10 from scratch, installing the apps you need from scratch. You know, obviously, you're going to back up your data before you do that, and then you can restore your data. That would be before you assume some other problem. Honestly, there's not, you know, 8 gigs of RAM is a little low. It's probably a, a dual-core processor if it's a 10 years old. So that's not super fast. Um, you know, it could be that, but, it, but it's performing slower than it used to. Yeah, it, it, well, it's as slow as it was before. The the new drive, the SSD. Was it ever faster though? It, but when you first got it home. No, and, and look, it has nothing on it. It's about three days old from the heat. I gave him the laptop with the, installed the SSD, and this, he put ten on it. Oh, uh, so he did not copy the old drive over. Nope. Oh, good. All right. All fresh. So he's already done what I was suggesting to do, mm -hmm. and it's still slow. Uh, I think all you can say at this point is it's slow hardware. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to pinpoint down. I've had others like this too that uh, it's old, but I just yeah, eight gigs is probably enough. You wouldn't notice a real slowdown unless you were opening a lot of tabs in Chrome or trying to edit photos. 
but the processor might be pretty sluggish. When you say yeah. slow, give me a, a kind of a how slow. <laughs> I don't know how you describe this. Well, but. Uh, you know, when you would it, it, just trying to load uh, Google on or, or eBay or, or uh, just opening a website. Yeah, opening a site just you know it's a drags and it finally goes and I I could say well it's the internet but it is and my router it's, it's like six feet away and uh, uh, but I was just want to in a general sense when a computer gets older I've had another one like this and I thought is this processor the processor I can get a new processor to high five Intel for twenty five bucks yeah but you can't and put it in that thing. Yeah, it can, actually, you can. I mean, it, uh, it's it, it, the motherboard and the, and the CPU pops right off the motherboard, and it's, it's all very, very cool. And it's really easy to change out parts, and as long as they're compatible, of course. But um, yeah, there won't be any modern processor you can put in there. No, I would like to put like an original processor, i i five Intel uh, chip. Yeah, but original ten years ago is not going to be fast. I mean, this is the funny thing. Processor speeds used to increase dramatically every year. They haven't in about 10 years. But it's possible you just, you know, you got one. Do you, what is in there? Do you know? It's, uh, it's an Intel i5, uh, uh, forgot, 24, 4M or something. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, but I'm saying I can probably get a new unused processor. No, you can't. Back in the day. From back in the day, but what you know, it's not like that's worn out. Back in the day, is going to have the same <laughs> the same problem. There, yeah, it wasn't like there were faster, super fast right. processors ten years ago. I mean, the it, well, issues no, not, not any faster, but just if this thing was fast at one time, it wasn't always the dog. And uh, well, one thing to try would be put just you know, since you don't have anything on that drive at this point that you care about, put Linux on it. Yeah. And see how that works. Just to see. I mean, that would tell you. But I, I think it might just be an old system. You know, I, I know. I, I think what you want me to say is, oh, yeah, if you all you have to do is reset the CMOS and uh, everything's going to be. But they, I don't I think you've done the main thing that you would I would say, which is replace the hard drive, wipe it, start fresh with a clean Windows and 10 install. Uh, and it's still slow. I think it's slow. Sorry. Oh, I thank you. No, no, no. Hey, look, it's old. You there's, know, the, I... there's the bad news. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Our show today, podcast today, brought to you by Udacity. Udacity's great. I took their uh, Python course when they first started, actually, back in, um, well, I signed up in 2012. I think they started around about that time. Sebastian Thrun started it, a Googler who realized, uh, working at Google, that they weren't getting the applicants they needed. With, well, they got the applicants, but they didn't get the skills they needed, even if they had degrees from, you know, computer science programs. So they created something called the Nano Degree Program at Udacity, a way to get the skills big companies need from their employees, a way to supplement what you might have learned with stuff you really can use. And it's all online. It's part time. You can do it while you work in another job. It's geared for anybody who wants to take their technology to the next level. Great content that you can't find anywhere else. Udacity offers the latest cutting-edge nanodegree programs. Things like AI and deep learning and, uh, I love this one, flying car, an autonomous flight engineer. I mean, talk, you know, <laughs> these are jobs for the future. The World Economic Forum has estimated that 75 million jobs in the next three years will be replaced by automation by computers. 75 million jobs. But if that's if you have one of those jobs, I may for all we know. But if you have one of those jobs, this is a way to get a job that's f future proof, future forward. Robotics software engineer, self-driving cars, machine learning engineer. Udacity works with big companies, not just Google, Microsoft, IBM, Amazon. And and by the way, uses team leads at those companies to be their instructors so that you're going to learn the stuff those companies want you to know for your job. If you love learning, you're always looking to learn more tech stuff, Udacity's for you. You can master the latest tech skills, very up to date, the latest techniques. Courses are not just videos, not just watching, but they're project-based. They're very much hands-on, active learning. Uh, you'll have real human feedback. You've got access to mentors 24-7. Your homework and your projects are reviewed by people working in the field, qualified professionals. But I think that hands-on is really key. 
you, you can watch and read and learn something, but until you actually have to apply it and do it, your grasp of it isn't, isn't 100%. And I really appreciate the, the project-focused learning at Udacity. And of course, because it's, they know you probably have a, a day job, they're very flexible, um, but you can do it fast if you need to. You can take five to 10 hours a week, work at your own pace any time of the day or night, and be done in as little as three months. So it's very efficient. It's very focused on practical learning. No wonder over 14 million people in over 240 countries have used Udacity. Flexible payment options. You can learn at your own pace and schedule. They have great free courses. There's some courses there. Even if you don't take a Udacity a paid course, you should absolutely do, for instance, polishing your GitHub or your LinkedIn resume. That's going to help you a lot. There's networking courses uh, so you can learn how to meet the right people to help you get your career started. I think Udacity is amazing. And by the way, if you are an employer and you have a team that you want to upskill, you want to get them some cutting edge skills in things like data science and AI and cybersecurity, I think many, many businesses really need that. You should check out Udacity for Enterprise, a great way to upskill your entire workforce with real world project based learning. Check it out. There's an enterprise section at Udacity's website. Check that out today for your, your employees. It's a great benefit, really nice benefit. Get the in-demand tech skills you need to advance your career. Go to udacity.com slash twit. By the way, we've got a really good offer. I should have told you this up front. Set, well, this is your reward for sitting through this commercial. 75% off, yes, 75% off any program, but you need to use this offer code, twit75. That's the secret code, twit75. And that offer ends June 30th, 2021. So don't, don't uh, drag your feet on this one. What a great way to start your summer. By the end of the summer, you'll be ready to get a great job with Udacity. Udacity.com slash twit. 75% off if you act right now and use the offer code twit75. Udacity. Thank you, Udacity, for supporting the Tech Guy Show. I know we have a lot of listeners who'd be very interested in that. Thank you if you are interested for using that offer code uh, and the address so that they know you heard it here. Offer code twit75 at udacity.com slash twit. Now back to the tech guy. This is the guy, <laughs> this is the guy, the cat, the man who is so hip. Mr. Scott Wilkinson, home theater <laughs> geek, contributor at techhive.com, a regular on our show every day, every week at this time. We talk about big screen TVs. We talk about surround sound. Have you, you've been reviewing these cuckoo speakers, these Oda speakers i have are you prepared yes. to talk about that yet or you want to put that off well i can talk about it um it's intriguing i set mine up i bought them oh you did you did good yeah my review is my formal review is going to come out the end of june but okay well we can wait till then if you want because i wanted to spend some time with it because it's it's a very interesting concept uh, we can we can do some preliminary the theory was uh and this happened during covid yeah. So there were a lot of artists, live artists, who weren't working. Yep. And uh, Oda, O-D-A, uh, you know, one of the investors is uh, Alexis Ohanian, the, one of the founders of Reddit and Serena Williams' husband. And, uh, oh, I didn't know that, actually. Yeah, I don't know. How, that's how I found out about it was from him. Mm. And uh, and so I said, well, if, if Alexis is involved, it's probably good. The website is oda.co. But it's a cuckoo idea. The idea was we're going to make some very unusual special speakers that basically are a piece of wood. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a soundboard like you would have in a guitar. It's designed correct. to sound be essentially a pair of speakers that are an instrument. And we're right. going to sell them at almost at cost. I mean, they're, they're, I don't know, it's four or 500 bucks. They're not inexpensive, I, but, right. but they're not super fancy either. Right. And it comes with a little small box that connects to the Wi-Fi. But the idea of it is you can't put you can't listen to Spotify on it. I guess you can because there's line in so you could stream, but they don't recommend it because the speakers aren't designed for modern music. They're designed for live performances. And for instance, I haven't heard a performance yet. I've only been listening to sounds of rain from Tompkins Square in New York and stuff. But four right. o'clock this afternoon, yep. there's a band from Finland gonna play. Or That's Iceland. Right. Well, Iceland. 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 Yep. I have a yep. band from Iceland's going to play. Yep, and and th that's a very interesting thing, actually, that that you're hearing stuff from all over the world. 
Uh, they, they've been from New York. They've been from Iceland. They've been from Mexico. They've been from Japan. Terry Riley lives in Japan. I love Terry Riley's music. He was kind of a modern music guy. A, a pioneer. pioneer. He's now over 80 years old. Yeah. Um, and and he for this entire spring season, he's going to be on every Monday. So oh, I'll be listening. Uh, so be, have, be sure to listen. So on the Monday. speakers sound okay. He's pretty good. They're not. They're pretty good. They're I'm, I'm kind of surprised to tell yeah, you. Yeah, the they're on a big magnet, which is interesting, and <laughs> just as a bass. Yeah, that's just, the heavy bass. It's a heavy bass to keep them upright because basically they look like a pizza box. Yeah, a wooden you pizza know, the, box. <laughs> a wooden pizza box that's about twelve inches on a side, and this. And it's got a square wooden diaphragm. I mean, that's the speaker. That's the thing that vibrates and sends the the, the music into your room. And uh, you're, you're exactly right. There's two of them. It's really set up to be a, a single person experience, which that's is the a other little thing. strange. You're, you're kind of almost meditative, like you would exactly. sit on and a most, cushion and <laughs> yeah. listen to this. Or lie on the floor. That's what yeah. I'm doing, actually. Yeah, I'm me lying too. on the floor. Yeah. Um, and and most of the music you haven't heard much of it yet. I'm sure it's mostly it. acoustic, right? Uh, no, 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 it's actually mostly electronic. Oh, interesting. But it's all pretty uh, ambient. What, what we they, call ambient music. They said that the artists are are have a pair of these speakers and are mixing and designing their music to go with these speakers. Hmm. That's the other th thing that's kind of unique. Kind it's of a little, it's a little twee. Here's the other. Here's the downside. You subscribe to the music every quarter. Yes, yes. So you only get it's a, like 80, a season, <laughs> right? For, they, they have they have four seasons a year. They're about eighty bucks a season to subscribe, uh, but then you can listen whenever you want. Um, well, you, uh, and you can only. It's like the old days of TV, right? You, you, there's it's live. There's no recordings. And there's you, no recording. So, so I think the idea was <clears throat> basically let's have live performances in your house. Yes. Yes. And I kind of like that idea. Even after I do like, quarantine, yeah. it might be kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, the problem, though, is you have to remember when something is that you want to catch. Many has been the time I've now, you know, sort of at 4.30, I've kind of gone, oh, no, that was that was. Well, I'm leaving mine on all the time. <laughs> well, and when, it, when there's not a concert, you're hearing something ambient. It sounds like Either. it's a live microphone. I'm trying to hear it, it repeat. Yeah. It is. It's a live microphone in Thompson Square Park in New York. Right now, or the cicadas right now, in North the Carolina. That's right. Mm. Uh, for last last week, it was uh, the the volcano in Iceland. Wow. They had a they had a microphone set up some distance away from the volcano, uh, and you didn't hear much. It was mostly wind noise and <laughs> yeah, people walking by the microphone. It's ambient. Yeah. There's exactly. an app for iOS or Android that tells you what you're hearing. And then, uh, you know, it's just, it's really, it's an odd concept. It is. It's very interesting. I'm of, I'm of dual mind about it. Yeah. I, I really like the idea of experiencing something live from somewhere in the world. Um, I don't like the fact that you don't, there's no video. There's, there, they only show a few photographs of, of places they've been. kind of intentionally retro. Yes, yes, there is definitely a retro feel to it. Yeah, it's a little. Yeah. So four hundred bucks for the speakers. Yep. And then uh, you get one season for that. And right. Then and it'll then be, you have to pay eighty bucks, seventy nine bucks every quarter. In fact, every this, quarter. I guess the spring is is run out, so I'm going to have to sign. Well, up not for... yet. I think it's through June. Oh, okay, good. I think they prorate it because I just got yeah. my speakers. So right. it's kind of an odd right. thing. Anyway. We'll wait till uh, next month when you have your review. Next month when I have my full review, we'll talk more about it. Yeah. Um, but it's a, as you say, it's a very interesting concept. The speaker technology is unusual. So, uh, you know, there's there's something interesting there. Yeah. Well, quickly before we uh, wrap up here, uh, I just wanted to quickly mention uh, a, an email from Reggie who ha wanted to know about center channel speakers. And he said he asks, uh, you know, it, it, the center channel speaker is most important because it ha ha handles dialogue. But uh, does it does it need to go down to twenty hertz? Does it need to be a full range speaker? Do you Not need to unless specify? you have somebody talking <laughs> like this? Exactly right. 
The answer is no, you, it doesn't need to go down to 20 hertz. And you don't want to specify it in your AV receiver as large or full range. You want to send the low, it does, the center channel will get some low frequency information, but you want to send that to a subwoofer. Uh, so you designate the center channel and all your speakers, generally speaking, as small, which means that all frequencies below 80 hertz or so uh, get rerouted to the subwoofer. And that's really the way you want to set it up. Um, a full range center channel would be massive. It'd be huge. And it wouldn't fit very well under your TV <laughs> or, or your projection uh, screen. Now, you could get an... Uh, a, uh, an acoustically transparent projection screen and put a gigantic full range speaker behind it. But I don't really see the value in that. I, you know, the low frequencies are best reproduced by a subwoofer. And so you know, send them over there. Something interesting is happening because of Apple. You know, they announced and they'll launch it next uh, week or so. Mm -hmm. this, this lossless audio through Apple Music for free. But yes. more importantly, we've talked about that. S maybe more importantly, spatial audio. Mm -hmm. which is Atmos, surround right. sound. Otherwise known as immersive audio. And it might be worth having a nice surround sound system, of course, for your movies, for your home mm. theater. But mm. now I'm intrigued to see if, if artists and producers start mixing their music for Atmos surround. Some artists are doing that, and I hope more do. Well, Apple really will drive is. that, right? Yes, yes, undoubtedly they will. Sony has already encouraged artists to do that with their 360 reality audio system. Well, I'd like to hear more of that. I, and So maybe this is a good time to think about a surround system, not just for your home theater viewing, but, music but for as music. Well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scott Wilkinson, yeah. techhive.com. Thank you, Scott. Sure. Zonk. 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 <laughs> donk, donk, donk. <laughs> Let me give you your clock. You going to be oh, here to the top? You. I sure am. All righty. Ready already. Ready already. Oh, let's see. Where, where am oh, I? Oh, good. Um, oh, I'm on Zoom. That's right. That's where I am. Three minutes and 50 seconds. Hey, everybody. Always nice to see you. Always nice to hang out on a Saturday. Um. <clears throat> Thank you, Tech Dino. I am so glad you find my information interesting and useful. Yeah, I am enjoying the Oda. Now, the, que the question then becomes, do you like the music of the artists that they are... Uh, uh, do you have any choice? No. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. You have no choice. It's just yeah. what they present. And so the question is, is it something you enjoy? Uh, and I have to say that's been a mixed bag for me. Uh, some of it I really like. Uh, I, I'm I'm into ambient music myself, I, I especially lying on the floor. <laughs> um, I was hoping it'd be more folky. Yeah, there's very more little singer that. songwriter stuff. Yeah, I I kind of would wish that too. I agree. No, it's all it, most of it that I've heard so far is is very ambient. Yeah, that's disappointing. I don't care about ambient. Okay, well yeah. then you may you may not I enjoy may, this as they, much. You know, that was not made clear. Uh, I don't think it didn't say like you're going to hear spacey music. Yeah, I guess if I mean for Terry Riley, I can understand it. Sure, sure. It says sound, I didn't, it says live music from the homes of incredible artists every weekend. A new artist and series of performances that unfold over the course of days. It's getting to know mm -hmm. a stranger becomes a friend. It takes time. It doesn't say, but it's all going to sound like ambient slush. <laughs> it it really implies that these are artists sitting there with their instruments. I, I would I'm wish for more of that too. That's now the the for, the very first one I heard was a blues singer from Memphis. Uh, that's great. Uh, I'll take that. Don, Don Peebles, I think his name was. Um, and well, yeah, you know, it's the Peebles a, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. Was, yeah, and it was. It was it was cool. Don Bryant and Ann Peebles. That's it. That, that's it. Don Bryant and Ann Peebles. Exactly right. And uh, you know, they they were pretty good. I mean, that was a singer song a blues specifically thing. But most of the rest of it has been uh <laughs> not exactly what I well, I sometimes refer to modern uh, atonal music as squeaky bomp. 
and, and it's not exactly squeaky bump, but it's um, it, it's it's pretty chill. Uh, they they're Tuesdays and Thursdays. They do sunset concerts, and those are definitely chill. Those are are uh, very ambient. But um, the, this weekend, uh, last night was the first one of this Icelandic guy whose name I've forgotten. Uh, and uh, it, it was solo, and it was pretty ambient. Uh, we'll see what happens tonight and tomorrow. They, they have a, a featured artist on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at a certain time. And, uh, and then during the week, they have a variety of stuff. Plus, when, they're, when there's not, not a, an uh, artist on, there is ambient stuff. I mean, uh, yeah, ambient as in Thompson Square Park or the Icelandic Volcano or the cicadas in North Carolina. Uh, later, there's going to be uh, ambient from a sheep farm, I think. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it's very interesting. It, 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 like I said, I, I'm of split mind about it. And we'll talk about it more at the end of uh, June when when I actually have a review posted. All right. We'll talk at the top, right? You bet. You betcha. Thank you, Professor Laura, musical director. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888-ASK-LEO. <laughs> you heard my uh, technical issues a little earlier uh, with the phone. And uh, one of our uh, listeners apparently worked in, uh, in radio in the UK. Uh, <laughs> back in the day when the, um, he called it the studio desk, they call it, we call it a mixer in the US. When the mixer crashed, much like my phone system crashed, it was flick the switch to the CD player, on which was the 12-minute version of I Will Survive, just enough time to reboot the studio. BBC Radio Nottingham. The UK's first purpose-built TV radio network center for 10 years, but the software was a little dodgy. <laughs> Thank you, Kev. Because <laughs> uh, people think, you're the tech guy. You shouldn't have technical difficulties. No, no. You misunderstand. Because I'm the tech guy, I'm absolutely going to have technical difficulties. We're going to try to do stuff as it's never been done before, <laughs> which means it will break. <laughs> absolutely guaranteed. Positively. Reed on the line from Atlanta, Georgia, our next call. Hi, Reed. Hi, Leo. Great show today. Thanks for hanging on. The, uh, yeah, no problem. Um, my company changed from Outlook and the dreaded Lotus Notes to Gmail, it doesn't seem like it's suitable for a business application at all. I get very vague, nonsense, blank, cryptic subject lines that don't match the content of the message. Hmm. I need to fix them. Hmm. Because Let Gmail me, is... That's not know? specific to Gmail. That's whoever's sending you mail is doing that. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. That's um, true. So, however, I having come from Lotus Notes uh, as a refugee, Outlook is better, obviously, at Exchange Mail and Microsoft System. Uh, we use Gmail for our corporate mail here at my company. Um, I, I don't use Gmail as my personal mail for a variety of reasons, but I know a lot of businesses use Gmail. You don't remember, you don't have to use it uh, in the web interface. And that may be one thing that'll make you feel a little bit better. You're used to using a desktop client. So most email systems nowadays do have what we call web mail, even Outlook does, where you can use a browser to get your mail. But browsers are not really built to be mail clients. So Gmail, you can set up with whatever. Uh, if you used Outlook uh, in Windows, you can set Outlook up to work with Gmail. It'll be a lot more like your old system. I'm not sure about the subject lines, though. I, that's not Gmail. Yeah, they they require us to use the web interface. Oh, that's nice. Called. Well, then that's your company to blame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm trying to find a workaround for them. I found a third-party app called Gmail, and they discovered I was using it. Not, not, I'm not Gmail. I apologize. Uh, rename email. Yeah, They discovered I was using it, and now they blocked it. They will not let you use a dedicated client. They want you to go through the web. They want you to go through the web. Yeah, well, that's... Or not, in a business situation. Yeah, I agree with you that the web... Actually, I, sh you know, I mean, I guess it's a matter of taste. My wife, who runs our business, is a, 
uh, financial uh, expert. She's been a CFO and CEO. Uh, she uses the web interface, which I always I kind of laugh at, but she's really got it dialed in. She has a lot of filters, a lot of folders, and, and she lives on the web interface. I've never liked a web interface because I feel like, uh, as I said, a browser is not ideal. Um, so when I used Gmail, I would just use a regular uh, client. It's too bad they won't let you do that. Um, I don't know about the subject lines. That Those should look exactly as normal. I don't. You're, you're saying you're getting cryptic? Subject lines? Well, you're right. I mean, that's oh. what people send. <laughs> I have to fix them on a regular <laughs> basis for the business that I'm in. Okay. So find them in the dysfunctional. Yeah, um, it's not a, yeah. I understand what you're saying. The trick with Gmail is to understand. For So one of the things that's weird about Gmail is they, they use tags. Uh, they don't really have folders. A folder is just a library of mail with uh, with certain tags in it. That's not immediately obvious. It looks like you know they're they're putting them in folders, but if you look at the folders, they actually have a little tag next to them. Uh, so once you understand that and start using the filtering system on Gmail, I th it's very capable. The other good thing about Gmail is it does a it, of all the email programs out there, it does a very good job at spam. But I. I can't help you if the if they force you to do the web interface and you're not comfortable with that. I that's I would just say try to get used to the tagging system and start using that. You know, if you look at the search in the at the top the search mail, you don't yeah. you're not you can do much more. It can be much more sophisticated. Uh, on the right, there's a down arrow and it says show search options. Start playing with the search options because. That gives you a lot of capability. Uh, I think okay. maybe just uh, given that I can't help you because your company forces you to use webmail, uh, all I can tell you is get to know Gmail better. There are a lot of features in Gmail. Were you looking for a way to trick your company? No, not at all. Okay. I just need to be more productive. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I feel like the Gmail search is nearly non-operative. I've watched video on YouTube, and I've gone to a lot of different sources yeah. or whatever. But yeah, since you helped me all the way back <laughs> to call for help. You were hoping I would have some ago. magic. <laughs> I knew you had the silver bullet for it. <laughs> well, I stopped using it. So I'm kind of in your camp. Yeah. Um, I okay. used it for a long time because of its uh, spam filtering, but I would never use the web interface. Yeah. I always used, I always actually used it as a filtration system and then passed it over to another system. Uh, I use a, yeah. a fast mail. Now, you might be able to trick your company because Gmail has a setting, uh, and actually, many uh, email, for instance, look at fast mail. You can set up your fast mail to grab all your email from Gmail. The outbound mail, you can then have go through Gmail. You could say, I want to use Gmail's SMTP server. So I bet you, you can kind of trick your company into thinking you're, you're slavishly using their web interface by getting a third-party client to grab the mail from Gmail, not using the, the POP server. You can even have, Gmail even has a way to forward it from Gmail. Uh, if you go into the Gmail settings and you look uh, at... I think it's called Pop and IMAP or something. Let me see. I'll look at it real quickly. And I'll tell you. Uh, forwarding and Pop IMAP. You can add a forwarding address. And I, unless they go in and look at your settings, they may not even know that. Does FastMail allow you to fix the subject lines like Lotus Notes and Outlook? That's an interesting question. So you can't, what you want is the ability to, to without. Mod, without resetting the mail, go in and, and, and edit the subject. Yeah. I don't know of anything that will let you do that. That's a that's specific. Okay. That's very specific to Lotus and their server and Outlook and their server. That is not part okay. of the email spec. The only way to change the subject is when you reply to or forward it. Then you can have a new subject. But you can't yeah. change it. I don't know of any email system that will let you change an existing email. And that's for uh, some pretty good reasons. You don't, you want to kind of yeah. know that that email is unmodified. If, you know, 
uh, in fact, there may even be legal requirements in, in some businesses. You have to save your mail for seven years and so forth. And you know, they wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be using a system to let you modify. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very sympathetic uh, because, David, the, you know, I never liked Lotus Mail, but there were features in Lotus Notes that you just couldn't get anywhere else. And so you've gotten your work, your workflow is set up a certain way. And Gmail's just throwing a monkey wrench in that. So I'm very sympathetic, but you're really at the mercy of your company. Try the forwarding thing. The rename email by, um, and I'm not trying to throw a plug in for anybody. No, please do. That's fine. Find it on there. Yeah. Uh, Cloud HQ mm -hmm. works. It's very buggy. but um, So it lets you change the subject line? Yes, it does. That's why it's called rename email. Email, yeah. How interesting. And Lotus Notes and also Outlook will let you do it as well. If, if you go, you have to dive really deep in the settings, but it, it can be done. Well, uh, let's open that question to everybody. Uh, if you know of a way to change a subject, there must be a way to do it if they can do it. I wonder yeah. what they're doing. Type in the name, name of the email, the new subject, click rename. Wait for a few seconds. It'll then be renamed. So are you a manager and you want to change, so your employees are using lousy subjects and you want to change them? No, I'm a, a kind of a tech person. Uh, not, not, a, uh, not a computer tech person, but I work in a very technical area and I need certain things in the subject lines in order to help organize things, because I get a lot of nonsense. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Subject lines, people need to be taught how to use them properly. I completely agree with you. Yeah, so this is a Chrome extension. So there must be, I wonder, yeah. I'm going to have to look at this. There must be some something they're doing. If they can do it in a Chrome extension, there must be a way under the hood to do it in Gmail. I will have to, I will have to look. Out of sync says you can just edit the inbox file. It's text, but yeah, you shouldn't do that. I don't know. That's yeah. that's really interesting, and I don't want to get you fired. <laughs> so I'm not worried about it. I'm um, you're on your way out the door anyway. Need <laughs> to retire anyway. I All may right. give it for another three or four years. But, okay, uh, Reed, I have to I have to run because it's Scott. This is Scott's segment, okay. but I appreciate it. I'm sorry I couldn't be more help. Thank you. Thank you, Reed. You've done a lot of help. All right. Take Alrighty, care. Goodbye. At least moral support for your <laughs> your sad and tragic situation. Indeed. <laughs> Are all yours. Oh, how do, yeah. This is interesting. So there is a way how to change the subject line of a reply. No, no, no not of a reply. You want to change it in the email. That's what he wants to do. All right. Go ahead, uh, Scott. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so I was... Uh, I was actually looking up some stuff for Wizardling in the Discord chat room. Uh, he was asking about studio monitors. And I said that I really like Genelec uh, studio monitors. And I since, since I wrote that in the uh, Discord chat room, I uh, remembered also JBL. JBL studio monitors, uh, in particular, the uh, 705, I think they are. Let me look here. Um, no, 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 I don't want that. I want this. Uh, yeah, the uh, 308 Mark II or the th is uh, 250 each. The 306 Mark II is 200 bucks each. Uh, I'd go with the uh, 308s myself. Uh, or uh, if you got the money, the JBL 705 uh, would be really something. Uh, that would be wonderful. That's $1,000 each, though. Uh, so he was asking about pricing, and so that's what I was kind of looking up. Um, the, uh, yeah, the JBL 705, I thought they made a 708 as well. Um, but anyway, yeah, the... Uh, the 308 and the 306 are, are more reasonable. The, in, ter in terms of Genelex, uh, their least expensive one is the uh, 8010A, is uh, 350 bucks. I don't can't see whether it's each or not, uh, but they go up to a thousand bucks and more. Uh, both of those are fantastic 
uh, brands for studio monitors. Uh, Beatmaster says there should be a healthy uh, secondary market for monitors. I suppose that's true. Uh, oh, and one Brian says KRKs are also great. I agree. I agree. I hadn't I hadn't remembered KRK. That's another good one. Um, I myself in my studio, you can see it behind see them behind me are the Tannoy NFM eights. That's an older speaker, but boy, they sound great. Um, they really sound great. So, uh, so yeah, KRK would be good. Genelec would be good. JBLs are good. Uh, Tannoys are good. Um, uh, I, uh, the 104s, I have not used the 104s. I, I think you're talking about JBL, right? Um, uh, yeah, Joss, uh, Just Nick says, I see a 708i and a 708p. Uh, the P, I'm pretty sure, stands for self-powered, and that's certainly what I would get. Um, the Genelecs are self-powered. I'm not sure about the KRKs. I think they are. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, the I would get the Ps for sure. If you can afford 708Ps, they use the same tweeter as the M1s. Uh, which are JBL's, you know, mega flagship speakers uh, that are used in studios as well as homes, but I think they're like 20 grand each or something. But they have this waveguide tweeter that's that's really wonderful. I have heard it, and it's really, really great. Um, uh, yes, the Genelec at Wizardling, the Gen Genelec 8010A is their low-cost one. That's that's the bottom, or well, the entry level, shall we say? Uh, and the frequency response I read only goes down to sixty-five hertz. So you'd probably want to pair a subwoofer with them. Um, most monitors you actually would, although probably the the super high end, the top end Genelex might go down low enough, but. Yeah, sure. The Genelec 80, 8010s are probably wonderful. Um, Lawn Dog, tell me, what type of sound are you looking for in a studio monitor? Great question. And the answer is neutral, completely transparent. Uh, most consumer speakers uh, are have a, a certain... Vo uh, sonic signature and very often it's what we call the smiling curve or the smiley curve the eq kind of emphasizes the bass and the and the highs to one degree or another uh, because people generally find that that they are drawn to that sound it's a warmer sound it's a uh it's a it's a compelling sound but when you're mixing in a studio, you don't want that. You want well, you want to listen to your music on that kind of speaker at some point in the mixing process just to hear how it's going to sound on a consumer speaker. But as you're assembling your song or your music together, you want that monitor speaker to be as flat and as neutral as possible. Well, that's... You want it to sound like your listeners are going to have it sound too. Well, right? eventually, yes, you do want to listen on consumer speakers. But when you're putting it you together, you don't want the speakers to color your what you're mixing. I guess correct, yeah. correct. I, that's very. I feel very strongly about that. Good. Thank you, Scott. Next so week, there you go. Next week. Well, hey, hey, hey! How are you today, Leo Laporte here, the tech guy? Time to talk about. Computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones. We got your smart watches. We got all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. You know, our, our last caller, Reed, from Atlanta, got me kind of thinking. He wanted to, and maybe you know of a way to do this. He wanted to change the subject line in an email in place, you know, somebody else's email um, in Gmail. So you're looking at your Gmail list and you see a subject line. You go, that's a terrible subject line. You want to change it uh, to something that makes more sense. It made me think of a couple of things. But <laughs> first, I guess first of all, if you know of a way to do that, let me know. 
There must be because he showed a he found a, a Chrome extension that can do it, which means they're going under the hood somehow. And there's got to be a way to do that anyway. Um, but what, it made me think: What is a good subject line? I'd love to know what you think. Your email: What's a good subject line in email? I I kind of do have some opinions on this. I imagine everybody does, or maybe you've never even thought about it. I like to keep my subject lines fairly short. Uh, and refer to what the email is about. Uh, I always try to think about what. Now remember the the email program you're using, and your and your recipients using is just going to show maybe the first ten words at best. You know, just a little chunk of that. So it's got to be short enough to fit in there, and yet it needs to contain enough information so the person can look at that subject line and kind of know what your email is about. So actually, I do, when I read an email, I do, I'm thinking about this. I do spend some time thinking about, and I often change as the email uh, <laughs> evolves, what the subject line should be. I sent an email the other day to um, an author uh, to I try to, to solicit him, to let, let him, me interview him for the uh, book. It worked. He did. New book, Andy Weir, uh, Project Hail Mary. Great book. Love it. Going to be a movie with uh, Ryan Gosling soon. But uh, I was trying to put in the subject line something that would let him know what I wanted. So I said interview request. Okay, I usually do that. But then maybe I'm thinking, does he know who I am? Does he know me from Adam? So I said, you know, for the Tech Guy show or something like that. I might have said for the podcast network for Twit. Now, at that point, I think you stop. But you, maybe you would put in, would you? Uh, we talked two years ago in your last book, something like that. I think that's too much. It's got to be short. Sometimes if, you, if, you, if, if the message is short enough, chat room's pointing this out, uh, the whole message could be in the subject line. And then there's a convention that nobody uses. <laughs> Old timers know. You put in parenthesis or brackets, E-O-M, end of message. And sometimes I'll put N-R-N, no reply necessary. I don't, that, those might be good abbreviations to keep in the subject. Like E-O-M means there's nothing more. This is it. That's the message. <laughs> I'm going to be out sick today. E-O-M, end of message. Or, uh, hey, I love what you did. Keep up the good work. N-R-N, no reply needed. You got any others of those? Can we make those kind of standard? Because I think I don't use it that often because I think, you know, people don't know. It's kind of an old school uh, abbreviation. I don't think a lot of people don't know what that is. If you saw that in a subject line, NRN, would you would you know? Oh, that means no reply necessary? Would you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's some other ones the chat room's coming up with. N-O-M, no other message. See, I never saw that one. That's interesting. N O M. Hmm. I, I I like this idea. What is making sound? Something of mine is booping. I am going to try to stop it. Um, Matt Ryder in our Discord says, "I think it's a good idea to think of how someone will look for this message on Google." Oh, that's a good point. They may be searching through subjects, so you want to make sure there's keywords maybe in there that, that make it easy to find. DNR, do not reply, okay, or do not resuscitate. Could be either. Could be could go either way. <laughs> I think DNR, unfortunately, because of do not resuscitate, maybe is the wrong <laughs> message. 8888 ask Leo. Rio is on the line from Escondido. Hello, Rio. Yeah, hi. Good to Second talk to you. I'm a call for help. Oh, I'm I'm here to help. That's my job. Okay. So here's a situation. I'm blind on my right eye and have limited vision on my left eye. Okay. And I'm trying to buy uh, a unit that can convert audio to text. And then I can print it out. Uh, so... Uh, you want to convert audio to text? Yes. Like, and then you could print it out really big. Mm hmm. Okay. Because you can, can you hear all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I just, I, it's just that I do everything with my eyes. I'm uh, kinetics. 
So you really like to you like to read it. You don't like to hear it. I, I at this time with my blindness, it's better if I try to read it than okay. hear it. All right. Because when I read it, when I hear it, sometimes I can't take notes fast enough. Ah, I, I got it. Okay. So I'm trying so, to take notes. And, there are lots of ways instant, to do this. Since I can't see, sometimes I write on top of what I just wrote. So there are companies that do this. Uh, do you have a Do you have a smartphone? I have a smartphone and also I have a big iMac. Oh, okay. Is your smartphone an iPhone or an Android device? Because Android iPhone. does okay. IPhone. And Google has added text uh, audio to text captioning to Android, which is pretty amazing. But there is a problem with it. Uh, I don't think it saves it to a file, so I don't think you could print it. It's really for people reading as, uh, you know, so they don't have the audio on when they're watching mm -hmm. a video or something. So I think you're going to want to have one of the one of the services that does this um, yeah, and gives you a text yeah. file, right? Yeah, I have seen some of my services, and I kind of do like that because they say that they put in extra words there's no confusion well nothing's yeah, nothing's not perfect I gotta tell you computers aren't great at transcription okay. I'll tell you the one I use uh, and okay. and uh, it, you know it's not it's not completely free but they I think you could do a few hours a month free you could certainly try it for free okay you get 600 10, 10 hours actually that's a lot for free it's otter o t t a r I'm sorry o t t e r like the animal yeah. dot a i otter.ai and you can l upload the audio to them and then they will s they're actually and they do have an app i believe and then they will uh send you the text which you could then print okay. yeah i did find i did find otter yeah when i was doing my search yeah i think otter's pretty good so they have an app which you can use to record so if you're at a meeting or you're listening to a lecture you can record it and it will automatically send it to otter it works with Zoom, too. So if you're on a Zoom call, you can record the Zoom call, and it will automatically send you a transcript. They do it very quickly. Um, it is not, So this is an example of a computer-generated script. I think it does a very good job, but it may not be perfect. There are no, some... No, no. I know. I'll have to read it. Yeah. You're going to have to see and if it works for you. There are some companies that send it off to humans. And uh, those are tend to be more expensive. They have a very a lot of them do it inexpensively um, using humans by doing a very interesting trick. They send it to a number of different people using something Amazon has called the Mechanical Turk. And so they'll just send a small chunk, like a sentence, and have five different people transcribe it. And each of them gets an, a penny or two. And then they compare the five, and if there seems to be a consensus among the five people, then they say that's the right answer, which is kind of kind of interesting. Google has, uh, and Microsoft both also, like Otter, offer artificial intelligence conversion. Um, okay. So I think it's going to be cheaper to let the computer do it if you're satisfied with the result. Okay, it, so, so when I use a computer... Uh, who I have to send it to? No, well, it depends. If yeah, you can use the um, Otter app, and it'll just automatically send it to them and send you a transcript. Okay. Otherwise, you can email it to them, the audio to them, or oh, upload I it see. to them. Okay, yeah. got and, it. And then, if you want a human to do it, there are services like Scribby, S C R I B I E, um, and they're much more accurate because they're using humans, but it's much more expensive as a result. So I, I would, if I were you at like 10 cents a minute, if I were you, I would try Otter or Microsoft has a, a, a service that does this. Google has a service that does. These are, these are inexpensive or free and see if it's close enough for you. You know, okay. it, it, you know, you might have, you'll start to get close, used to the mistake. Close enough is good enough for me because then good. I correct it. Right. That's my opinion too. You kind of know what they're saying. Yes. Especially since you have the audio, you know, you, you kind of right. know. But this will give you a, ba a basic idea. Yeah, what I do is I would use the audio and then look at the transcript that I received and go over that 
Or there's a mistake, I'll circle it and then go back and redo that. Perfect. Well, I hope that helps, Rio. Yeah, it does. Thank, Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Yes. Take care. Bye. Leo Laporte, the <laughs> tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. Bob on the line from Walnut Creek, our next caller. Hi, Bob. Hi, Leo. Congratulations on number 1800. I've listened to all of them. No, you haven't. I have, a, have you really? I, have. I, I, I swear I have. I, I, <laughs> even if I go on vacation, I'll catch up and record them and listen to them. So. Wow. Thank you. That's a lot. That's a lot of tech guy. Wow, it is. I, I don't want to add. I don't want to add up the hours. But, well, I could tell you three thousand two hundred and forty. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And don't tell my wife. Um, well, I finally listened to you because I listened to all eighteen hundred, and I bought an SSD, a one terabyte Samsung top, top of the line. Put it in my Dell i seven with sixteen gigs of RAM. Good man. Um, it was difficult to get that little screw to hold it in, but I got it in. I cloned it. It recognized it, but I can't get it to boot from it. I've tried pushing F2. I've tried pushing F2 and F12. Some people say that. I've tried. You can go in the settings in Windows 10 and access your UEFI. What happens is every time I do that, either the F2 or the U accessing it through settings, the screen sort of is blank. The, the power light is still on, but nothing's happening. And I can't get it access those UEFI settings. Now, someone said you can take out the little battery in there and no, 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 no. Put you automatically. In I've done the same thing, by the, the way. I took my Dell XPS uh, 13. It came with, a, a, I think, a 256 gig M2 M.2 NVMe drive. Uh, I bought a two terabyte M.2 NVMe drive, and the one I got was a weird. The, actually, the Dell one was a weird form factor, so I had to bend. So the holder on the Dell down flat so I could put the long one in, screwed that little screw in. Um, but once you've done that, uh, you need to partition it. You need to tell Windows this is a drive. It doesn't look at like anything. So I, I got that. I, I got past that. It recognizes it. I was able to so, clone so, my drive onto it. No, don't clone. That's where you went wrong. Okay. Yeah. So that's where you went wrong. So what you need to do is use the Windows installer. You make that USB key. Cloning isn't going to bring all the parts that you need with it. You need the USB okay. key with a Windows 10 installer on it. And you need to run through the installation process. And in there, there is an options uh, button that you can uh, run the partitioner. But since you've already, I believe, correctly partitioned it, Installing Windows on top of your existing Windows shouldn't delete your data, but should put the uh, critical boot information on there. But don't you have to go into the settings and say boot from that instead of the spinning hard drive at some point? Oh, you have two drives in there. Yeah. It will default to the M.2 drive uh, unless you've changed those settings. No, I, yeah, I can't access the settings, so... yeah. Okay, so what I need to do is put an installer on a USB drive. This is what you should have done in the first place. This is what I did as well. Okay. And then and then boot to that and install in effect install Windows on that M.2 drive. And uh, and what that'll do is the ins the reason is you can't copy Windows. You need to install Windows. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. I will do that then. So Yeah, I and it'll automatically just recognize the USB and when I stick it in and, and read from that, or you may have to go into the BIOS set, what we used to call BIOS setup, the setup, you know, you press F. That's what, yeah. Well, that's what I can't do. Oh, you I, can't get a setup at all? No. Well, that has nothing to do with that. That's something else. So well, I see. I'm, I, now I understand why you were pressing all those keys. I thought, why is he pressing all those keys? You can't get into setup at all. No, I can go through settings, and it says access uh, US UEFI settings, and then the same thing happens as if I'm pressing F2. The computer, no, nothing on the screen. The power light's still on, but no, no activity can't do anything pressing enter or move the mouse. So I have yeah. to turn the computer off. So up. there is a reboot. on Dell, and I'm trying to remember what the key is. There is a boot menu that goes straight to boot menu. I think it's F11. F, it's F11 or F12. That skips well, through. I did F12 also. 
Try F11 then. F12. Yeah. Okay, so there's two it. there's two there's two buttons that you can push. One is to get into the setup. One is to get into just the boot order. And okay. if you can get into boot order, then you can boot to the Windows installer. And then yeah, it sounds like your UEFI partition got clobbered. Um, and boy, I thought that you would be able to run setup even if that got clobbered, but I guess not. So there may have also be some other issue with the drive. Is it, did you, the drive you get, uh, there are M.2 drives that are not NVMe. That might this also be NVMe. It is NVMe, and the original Dell was NVMe. Correct. Yeah, okay, good. That's good. Um, let me look into this, but I believe that if you can get to the boot order menu, that's all you need. And then boot to your USB key, you'll be golden. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So which 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 Dell is it, just out of curiosity? Uh, you know, I don't remember. It's, it's a, an Inspiron. It's a, it's a laptop. That's fine. Inspiron's fine. Uh, yeah. Let me look at the Inspiron um, boot keys. Somebody's saying it's F8. Yeah, F12 is the boot menu. And you say F12 does not work. Correct. Well, actually, I this I did. I someone said alternate F two and F twelve. No, no, don't alternate. So no, 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 no. F two okay. is the system setup. I would try again. System setup should not be running. Should not. You shouldn't. It should run even if you don't have a drive in there. So okay, that, but I should. I I need to still install Windows on the new drive, though. That's something I need to do on the SSD. Um. This is puzzling to me. I'm worried that there's something else has gone wrong. Sometimes when you open up a computer, you inadvertently disconnect things and so forth. Um, you can't get into setup at all. That That's bothering me. Yep, no, not through the settings nor the F2 key, so. Yeah, it should be through F2. And there's no, there's, there's no splash screen, really, like uh, Dell. Yeah, you know what? I don't think this has, I don't think this has to do with i think something went wrong in the setup so what i would do is reopen that machine take out that m.2 drive make sure that you didn't knock any wires loose put the old did you keep the old drive no it's still in there oh so you have two M nvme slots two m.2 slots no no the other one is just a spinning hard drive what was the old boot drive? Was it the spinning drive? Yeah. So I only had a spinning drive, and then I put in the SSD. But it had room for an additional M.2 drive. Yeah. I see. I would suggest, just as a diagnostic, taking out that new drive and see if you can get into the boot settings. Okay. Because there's boot settings... That stuff runs out of firmware. That should not be affected by how your drive is for formatted or partitioned or anything. I'm more, uh, but it, you know, I don't know why you can't hit F12 or F2. Well, I'll try F12 by itself. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah. I'll see what happens. Yeah. So if worst comes to worst, I guess I'll, I can just back everything up. I think if it's yeah. not, I think it's not installed. If it's not installed properly. The, the, it's possible that Dell, since you don't see a splash screen, the Dell is not completing post power on self test, is, is stopping. And so that sounds like there's something you might have a short. Uh, I would take out that drive and see if it'll start up again. You might have, might have done something when you put that new drive in. Well, everything works, though. I mean, the computer works fine. Uh, oh, you are able to boot up. Yeah, no, everything works just as as if the uh, SSD wasn't in there. But you just can't go um, into BIOS setup. Correct. Well, then something, <laughs> maybe the keyboard's kerfluggered. Um, that's odd. Well, no, it does something. It, it does something when it, when I catch it at startup and hit F2, uh, you know, keep pushing F2, then it will go into this sort of sleep mode, sort of, where the power's still on, nothing on the screen, and um, 
And the same, if I go into settings, there's a way you can access your UEFI setup mode in settings from the settings menu. And this is a when laptop, is that correct? No, a desktop. It's a desktop. And is it a wired keyboard? Uh, yes. Boy, I'm gonna, I have to go because Johnny's here, but I'm not sure what's going on. Um, that's a puzzle. This episode of The Tech Guy brought to you by Nareva. Man, we're going back to work. Woohoo! Except, you know, we still got to do social distancing. We got to wash our hands. All the important things to stay safe and healthy. Social distancing, though, can have big implications for meeting room audio. And if you've got people coming back to work and you're going to, you know, have your meetings, I want to tell you about the Nareva microphone system. It is very cool. It helps you solve this problem of social distancing in a meeting room. You could, you know, there are different ways to do it. You could put a microphone at every position on the table, but then people have to sit in one specific spot and you have to sanitize the mics after each meeting. It's kind of a pain. There are beam forming systems, but usually those have to be set up uh, and, and adjusted on a regular basis by a technician. It's a, expensive because they're highly skilled. Not ideal. But there is a way to get clear, reliable audio and still let your team act naturally and still feel safe, socially distanced, faced whichever direction they want. It doesn't matter. Nareva's audio is the first socially distanced mic system. They use something patented. They've got four patents on it called Microphone Mist. And in effect, what it does is puts thousands of virtual microphones everywhere in the room, and it adapts to the size, the shape, and even the people in it as they move around automatically. You don't need anybody to adjust it. You don't need a technician to install it. You can install it yourself. It's basically as easy as installing a sound bar. It's a, it is a, a speaker plus microphones. But this mist technology is so cool because no matter where somebody's facing, it's like they're on mic. The HDL3, there's different systems for different size rooms. The big one, the HDL300, became the first microphone and speaker bar to be certified for meetings, big meeting spaces, up to 15 by 28 feet. That's huge. It fills the room with those microphones. Everybody's on mic, even if they're not, right? True full room coverage. So it doesn't matter where people sit or face or how distanced they are. No technicians needed. You can do it yourself. Nareva console is the software that puts device management into your hands and on your terms you can adjust settings install firmware updates check the device status and more all from online a secure cloud-based platform console of course comes with every nareva audio system and when you enroll your system you get an extra year of warranty absolutely free so many awards for nareva uh, top new technology awarded ise 2020 for the hdl 200 system it's a little bit smaller but they have one for every size uh, of room, a full line for small, medium, and large spaces. You know who uses it? HubSpot. Jimmy Yan, who is the chief uh, collaboration engineer there, said, quote, we were so impressed with the sound quality, the ease of install, and the ease of use of the Nareva HDL 300. It was a no-brainer for us to adopt it. They love it. You will, too. If you want to learn more about how Nareva Audio is the simple, cost-effective way to let your team's distance in meetings and still act and converse naturally, go to Nareva.com slash twit. N-U-R-E-V-A. Nareva.com slash twit. Thank you so much, Nareva, for supporting The Tech Guy Show. And thank you for supporting The Tech Guy Show, the podcast, by going to that address, Nareva.com slash twit. Hey, by the way, episode 1800, Matt, thank you. That's very sweet. He's been everywhere, man. He's breathing the mountain air, man, except he didn't go anywhere this weekend, man. He was going to. Johnny Jet. Good news. He's with us instead. Hi, Johnny. Hello. You canceled Actually, I did go to Legoland this week. Oh, I love for, Legoland. For, in San Diego? Or in, uh, yes. not, in San Diego, not, not in Denmark? It's, no, not in Denmark. I uh, have been to both, by the way. Have you? Yeah. I've been to Denmark, but only Tivoli, never uh, Legoland. Tivoli's very cool. That's in Copenhagen. And then you have to go to Aarhus, which is a little island off the coast for the original uh, Legoland. Know, I am part Danish, by the way. You look it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also Italian, half Italian. But. Well, you don't look that, but okay, I'll take I'll take your word for it. So, <laughs> but it was it actually, I just came in from LAX because I had a long story, but my dad, I've been working all week to try and find really good seats 
first class seats to fly them to New York. And, and I figured out, you know, how to do it. You just got to keep checking. They, they change so much, especially wow. when you're using your miles yeah. and um, on American. And I was able to get us really nice seats. And then we're on the way to the airport in a car service. And he's like, are you coming just to escort me? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's silly. Why would you do that? He goes, I'm not a baby. And I'm like, listen, you kind of are. You're 92. And... Um, <laughs> You're wearing diapers, Dad. I think you're a baby. <laughs> well, he's not in diapers yet. Oh, but right. anyway, <laughs> if it, first of all, I didn't really want to go because I'd rather be here with my kids. And he's like, you need to stay home and take care of your kids. Don't worry about me. And it, almost like he wanted to be by himself, like oh. to independent to show that he can do it. So I said, listen, I'll do it if the flight attendants are cool. And I, I, the gate agents were. I went on the plane. I said, listen, I don't really want to go. This is a c deal. And um, anyway, they're like, we'll take care of this woman. Pamela, the purser for American Airlines, was amazing. She's like, I will take good care of him. I said, all you got to do is make sure he gets in that wheelchair when we land, Aww. when you land. And uh, anyway, so who's meeting him at the airport? You got somebody meeting him at the airport? I have a car service. I, I use Black Lane and Black Lane comes, and comes right to the gate, right? Well, no, they used to do this concierge service. They right. cut it out actually right before the pandemic. Oh, they got, I mean, they were f smart to cut it out before that. But um, hopefully they'll start it up again. And actually, American Airlines this week has introduced something similar f for families, which I, I'm going to write about. And I don't know a lot about it yet, but I just read a quick. Uh, summary. But, uh, you know, the b airport was busy, but not crazy. S yesterday set a pandemic record. 1.9 million travelers went through checkpoints. The, I was expecting to make break the big 2 million, but it did not. I think they will do it on Sunday. But um, wow. there's definitely a lot of people traveling. They're traveling. This week. They're go I'm telling you, we're coming back, baby. It is. They say leisure travel is back to where it was in 2019. It's just the business travel. And, you know, they're not sure if it's going to. Actually, the CEO of Airbnb came out this week saying that he doesn't think uh, business travel will be the same. He thinks that people are going to start, and he's hoping, that they're going to live remotely all around um, the world and in and, and Airbnbs or rentals, because a lot of these millennials don't like to buy houses. So Airbnbs pivoting. Big time. That's a pivot. Now, was this temporary, though, and they'll go back to their old ways once people go back I don't, to their I, old ways? You know ways. what? That's the big question. I think that um, I think it'll be a mix. I don't think everyone's going to go back to the office. I think companies realize they can save some serious money. Business travelers don't, business travelers don't want to leave their family. They don't want to go around the world just for a meeting and go back home. So, you know, now everyone's got the technology. I think this really woke people up, and let's hope. Because, you know, we don't want the traffic on the road. We don't need so many people in the air. But um, only time will tell. So we'll see. But the cruise news had some big cruise news this week. Did you see that? No, tell me. What happened? So uh, Celebrity Edge is going to be the first oh. no. cruise out of Fort Lauderdale. Wow. Although there's a little, uh, the governor of Florida just threw a wrench in it because Celebrity says that everyone has to be vaccinated except kids. Under 16, I believe it is. So 95% well, of the people on board have to be vaccinated, all adults. That's good. I don't want to go on a cruise if there's not I'm vac with you, but uh, that's the good. Florida governor uh, has oh, other Rick views. DeSantis and he said doesn't like that, he, does he? He yeah. said if they do that, he's going to fine them $5,000 per passenger. What is wrong with this guy? Come on. So, this isn't so a politics. I think they're gonna, this is public I, health. I think they might pull out. I don't know. It's going to be interesting because I, I, I don't think they're going to cave for that. Um, Carnival... All these cruise ships are mostly based, their offices are based in South Florida. They're all in Florida, yeah. But Alaska, um, Carnival in Alaska says that everyone has to be vaccinated. But Carnival elsewhere- Watch what happens. They're, they're not saying that. Watch what DeSantis does if uh, Disney says you got to be vaccinated to come in the park. Then see how he caves. Well, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But June 26th is going to be the first cruise out of uh, Fort wow. Lauderdale. Wow. So, I saw Norwegian says uh, they're going to come back pretty slowly. They're going to come back very slowly. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, I think the first one's in October, possibly. Um, Frank Del Rio is the uh, CEO. They're going to do it slowly, but they will I, be I, back. I, you know what? I, I respect that. Uh, be cautious. Now, I do have a cruise coming up in January. I do hope they're back by then. Uh, <laughs> in fact, we're, we're kind of planning a cruise uh, in uh, July of next year, too. So we shall this see. This July. 
No, 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 no. I'm not doing anything in 2021. We're okay. going to okay. stay. Well, we're going. Well, to, you know what? Well, I would go on a cruise because I do think it's going to be safe. But I would. I like, like I the idea the of them saying one. you all have to have vex be vaccinated. What's wrong with that? Uh, I, I'm with you on that. We'll see. I, you know, I just want to see what 200 happens. 200 million people have been vaccinated now. I don't think we're going to turn into Shrek or anything. It's. <laughs> I understand maybe you were nervous when the first 10,000 or 100,000, right. but hundreds of millions, no, I think it's okay. I understand. Go Listen, ahead. I, it's it's what, what's allowing us to travel again. I, I see it firsthand. I hear it from... From all kinds of uh, travel professionals. It's ridiculous. But Politics should not get involved in public health. <laughs> Speaking ridiculous. of um, vaccinations, by the way, if you're a member of United Airlines' um, frequent flyer program, you go to their website. They, it's, I'll tweet it out. Um, you can upload your CDC card and you have a chance to win. They're giving five people a chance to win free flights for the year for two. I think it's 26 round trips up to $270,000 in travel it's, and any class of service, which is the best part. I mean, you could fly 26 round trip tickets in first class. So to consider that if you've been vaccinated, which um, many of us have also, um, by the Last way, week I, gave you I loved your tweet of Pamela, the purser who's helping your dad on the plane. And you see that American Airlines responded. We love hearing this way to go, Pamela. So she was awesome. Yeah, awesome. I mean, that's, that's really why good. that's why I came home. I wouldn't I was always ready to go. I had all my bags. And oh, I see. You you were thinking to fly your dad home and you said, well, Pamela's taking care of him. Yeah. I was like, uh, listen, why do I need to fly to New York and just turn around right? Come back. It's terrible weather. It's freezing. All the festivity has been cold and my dad wants to be, you know, he wants to do something on his own. So I'm like, go for it. I'm just, uh, right now I'm just fingers crossed that the car service is there, but I'm sure they will be and that they find each other. But <laughs> do you have time to give you a website? Uh, sure. Why not? How much time do you need? I got a minute left. Minute Airheart. A-I-R. Yeah. Like a Amelia. Airheart.com slash explorer. Yeah. I tweeted it out. I tagged you. So they, this is, if you're traveling internationally, this will show you what requirements are. Oh, this is if great. If you get in, uh, if, this you, is if what you need, I need a vaccine or not, or if you need to get tested. And they do a nice job laying it out. They use Sherpa as one of their um, data. So Earhart is like TripIt. No, it's not no. like TripIt. What is, it, what is Earhart going to be? <laughs> There, right so now, it's a just, wait list. So right? if you're traveling internationally, you just put in where you're traveling from and to, okay. and it will tell you what the requirements are. Oh, nice. Because, you know, these days, everyone's like, oh, you just came back from Mexico, or you just came from back from Croatia or Iceland. How, how, how do you get in? And it's always changing. I mean, my head is spinning because you can't keep up. I mean, every day, something's changing. Like, even that cruise stuff in Florida. You know, I didn't read the cruise news this morning. It could have changed already. You, you just don't know. You don't know. It changes all the time. We're going to Hawaii in, uh, in a month and I'm, I'm going to have to figure out what the rules are. You know, And I do hope the rules in Hawaii will change and they're saying that they should by July 4th, but who knows? Um, you got to we'll keep see. track. Johnny Jet. He's at johnnyjet.com and he's our favorite travel guru. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. So it looks like, so I'm looking at the Explorer, but if you go to the front page at Earhart, they are going to be a kind of a trip it. Are they? Let it says see. a dedicated space for organizing your perfect trip. You can forward your plans ah, to them. They're giving trip it a little run for Confirmation the emails are parsed and updated when your plans changed. Plans are shared. This is trip it. That is trip it. And you know what? Trip is right for... Uh, I see. Right. Yeah. So I just went to update. their tool. Yeah, yeah. If you go straight to the tool, you don't see it. Now, this isn't available yet. It says join the wait list. But um, I think you should you should get it. If they don't let Johnny Jet in. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hopefully they'll let me in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm entering my email. They don't won't know who I am, though. I don't use an email at I don't, I don't call myself oh, the tech guy. I just got an email from Black Lane that the chauffeur arrived. At Yay. The so. Yay. So ask Natalie about my little invite. Thank you. I understand. Very kind of you. I understand it's a long shot because you got to get a babysitter and all that very stuff. Kind. But it would be fun. Well, and I thought, well, you come up here, you could just get on that little Burbank to Santa Rosa flight. Although I just, uh, yesterday I went to the dentist and the guy's like, you need two crowns. Oh. And I'm like, What? First of all, it costs a ton of money, and it's the next day in the morning, early morning. I think it's the only time whoop, you can get in. Whoop, 
by the way, not only will we take care of dinner, but we'll pay for your flight and hotel. So That's very does that help? If that very helps, kind. we're glad to do that. No, very you know, kind. I owe you. You, 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 you had you're very show. kind. Just a just a thought. Or you could do Elvelo Airlines night nineteen. Exactly, the flight's one. cheap. You won't be able to move, but the flight's cheap. <laughs> I guess you could fly home afterwards, or you won't want to, though. You'll want to spend the night, for sure. Yeah. Well, you it's, you, you know, I, I was making reservations, and you know that they they book up immediately. You have to do it the day they open up new reservations. Sure. So I did that. I've and never the, been. Oh. The only thing I could get was this dinner for four, and I thought, well, who would, who would be great? Well, you are so kind. I really appreciate it. I, I will double check with my wife, but... Um, if you can't, we, can talk we have... talk about going out there. She wants to go to Sonoma. Well, and she could do her little influencer thing. You've never yeah. been there, and this is not their regular dinner. This is a special. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Well, anyway, you well, no hurry. Ask I, ask Natalie. I'll let you know tonight. And we'll or, we'll cover the hotel, no problem. Well, you're very kind. Yeah. And the and the uh, airfare on a velo, nineteen dollars round trip. <laughs> you're you're on your own for the. Uh, oh, by the way, did you see? I got this thing all working now. So. It sounds uh, great. Thank you. Good. Well, Burke was a big help, although he told me to get this um, Star Tech. He says it's the best. Okay. Although it was just two, it was it was like three times the price of this Belkin one. Belkin's and fine. So I emailed Belkin, and they were kind enough to send me one. Oh. This multi-hub USB. Nice. And it seems to work great. And fixed I'm, it. I'm very excited about that. Fixed it. So it's out. It was. It's infinitely better, Johnny. Oh, good. Oh, well, I got the I really hardwire. I got, I got yeah. it all going right now. No, you fixed I should have done this a long time ago, and I apologize. I'm not sure what happened. No, I, uh, I'm so glad. And so. I'm glad you stayed home. Yeah, well, I, I am here. Actually, that's again, good news that you didn't have to go. That's good news. Yep. Yep. Well, every week I'm going somewhere. Then. Really? We're, like anywhere like most of them outside are, most the country? Most of them are local. Or? Like, you know, within driving So distance. I got a question for you. Yeah. Jane, my wonderful um, travel agent, travel agent Jane Zugsmith at Travel Store, asked me, where do you want to stay in Hong Kong in January? Kowloon or the, or the island? Well, the Kowloon side has a much better view. because She get said that. View. She said uh, you get to view Hong you Kong Island. You can take the ferry across. You ha she said, I want you to have a harbor view room, one of the great views yeah. in the world. Totally. I mean, You agree with that? that? That is the view that you want. See. That's why I have so, Jane and yeah. Johnny. Thanks, yeah. Johnny. You got the peninsula. You got the Ritz. You got the Man Mandarin Oriental. Take care. See ya. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Uh, thank you to Professor Laura, our musical director. Brooks on the line from Prattville, Alabama. Hello, Brooks. Hey, Leo, get me out of this mess. Oh, no. What happened? I need a 300-level class on how to stop Echo. I'm, I'm a content creator at home. I work for a company. I create highly technical content to teach people how to use cloud. I've done all the typical stuff you do. I've got uh, soft things here. I'm standing on a nice thick carpet. I've got curtains <laughs> on the wall in front of me. I've done all the basic stuff, but I think I don't know what I'm doing with this Blue Yeti X microphone and the super fancy software that came You out. sound good. Are you on the Blue Yeti right now? No, I'm just on the iPhone on my headset. It's just my goofy, dynamic voice. I don't know where the heck. Do you, do, do you work in broadcast? No, no, no. I, uh, I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm just really a, an instructor. I uh, was in software development for a couple of decades. Started realizing I was constantly teaching people how to do things correctly, and at the end of it, uh, I, I started to work for one of the major cloud providers as an instructor, and kind of had a little bit of that environment. Went to work for another company, and now what I'm doing is creating home content about how to use specifically Perfect. AWS. Perfect. And um, the so you are a broadcaster. I mean, that's honestly the definition is really broadened these days. You are yeah. training people, uh, teaching people how to do stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a broadcaster. You don't have, doesn't have to have a radio tower and a transmitter to do that anymore. Exactly. Exactly. And the thing is, is that, you know, I listen to a lot of stuff that I see on YouTube with the content creators there. They have such remarkable sound quality. As a matter of fact, I heard you just talking to Johnny about the sound quality he was able to get. And I was like, I want that. <laughs> I think I'm doing something wrong, Leo. So what's what what is this? What is the symptom that you don't like? 
I'm getting just a little bit of echo on the back side. So the Can reason I don't recommend the Blue Yeti. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> After I bought it. After you bought it. The reason I don't recommend and we don't use condenser mics is because mm. they're too good. Mm. So uh, you'll see, you know, you can spend thousands of dollars on a Neumann, oh, yeah. beautiful Neumann microphone, but you'll notice when they use those in recording studios, they put you in a booth that's lined with sound dampening materials because condenser mics can hear a pin drop. You're now, right. if you're recording Adele, you want every nuance in her voice you want to do that, but you then have to treat that room. You notice it's not a big room, it's a small room, and it's got sound dampening mm -hmm. everywhere. There's all sorts of reasons they do that, and, and it's mostly because that microphone will pick up every nuance. So oh, we don't use those in radio. I don't use those. I use, and Johnny uses, uh, a, a $300 mic uh, that's a dynamic large coil. And dynamic large coil. Yeah, and the reason we prefer those is, first of all, you don't need phantom power. Uh, mm -hmm. And second, uh, it it does it's, it's insensitive. If I get off axis here, so if I go off, off to the side, my the, you're gonna the audio is gonna drop 10, 20 dB. It it just is insensitive. I'm off I'm off mic now. The reason that's not desirable in some circumstances, a singer perhaps is, you know, they're moving around and stuff. But for an announcer, a broadcaster, you're speaking into the mic. You know enough to continue to speak into the mic. So, you know, the other problem with that is you need to have a good pop filter because, uh, you know, you're speaking into the mic. <laughs> so, uh, but but can, the good news is large coil dynamic mics are inexpensive. They don't need as much okay. electronics. So I use a mic from a Bob Heil. This is a Heil PR40. It's HeilSound.com. He's a old rock and roll sound guy. He did, remember Frampton Comes Alive, where Peter Frampton puts oh, yeah. a tube in his mouth and goes, I'm like, yo, yo, yo. Oh, yeah. Bob invented that. Yeah. Bob invented that for okay. Peter Frampton. And, of course, it was widely used in rock after that. He invented the quadraphonic sound for The Who. So this is a long... He did the Grateful Dead's sound. So this is a long-time sound guy. He's also a ham guy. And he hated the quality of microphones in ham radio. So he started Heil Sound. He makes ham microphones and ham equipment, but he also makes broadcast mics. And this, to me, is an inexpensive but very good mic. There are other good large coil dynamic mics sure makes mm -hmm. them the very famous sm58 used in nightclubs everywhere uh you can't kill it uh but i really like the heil um okay so that that will help a lot i'm not in a sound proofed room i'm in a normal you know i hate working in broadcast studios because you feel like you're in a padded cell Sure, sure. <laughs> but that's there's a good reason for that. Uh, I I don't even have uh, double pane windows. I'm looking out on the street. I don't have any. Well, I have a lot of hats on the wall, but no, it's no echo, no echo suppression. Right. But you don't hear a lot of echo. Same thing with Johnny Jet. He's in his basement, but because he's using mm -hmm. the Heil, it just works a lot better. Now, what I ended up doing to try to get the sound out was I literally built a darn blanket fortress. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Head. That's what you have to do. Blanket fortress. Yeah. And it was awful. And my wife kept walking. And you're by sweating thinking, and you're dripping and you look uh, like an idiot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think you, the thing is, is that I just, one of the things that I do is different is I just don't talk over like some PowerPoint presentation. I'm jumping on the camera and explaining things from. Yeah. You don't want to be looked just, like you're in a blanket fort on camera. Well, not only do you look like a blanket <laughs> fort, but then you start sweating and then you start shining. Oh, that's a good look, Leo. That's a real good look. I, I am, I'm really hot. I'm sorry. So I've worked in blankets before, and I, in fact, when I uh, have to record an ad or something in a hotel room, I'll often get under the covers or, or go in the closet to do that. <laughs> but it, I know it's not ideal. So um, yeah. I'm just sitting in a regular room, um, and, and we've been using right. these Heil mics for years. That's a, Now, 300 bucks for some is a lot, so uh, it's not a lot compared to a Neumann. Uh, but it's more than your blue blue Yeti was. So can I stay um, back? Can I stay back about a foot? Because typically with this mic, oh, do I can I stick? Can I keep it back out of the way so it doesn't show up on? So camera? keep it about that's a foot another away. problem. And do I need to have it on a boom arm? That's another problem. So every once in a while, my good friend uh, Becky Worley's a regular on Good Morning America, and I've she'll ask me to do something for it, and she says, "Can you get the mic out of the shot?" I said, "Yeah, Becky, but the sound will be. I'll have the mic way down here. The sound will be terrible." She said, I don't yeah. care. I just want the mic out of the shot. 
And the, that's TVs used to that. They wear those junky lavalier mics on their lapels, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, those are condenser mics, by the way. They uh, they're used to that. And if, if you know, if you listen just to raw TV sound, I'll never forget when Meet the Press made a podcast. I said, "Why does it sound so bad?" That's how it sounds on TV because nobody's listening. They're looking at the pictures. I realized <laughs> TV has a different standard. So we on my podcast, even though we do video. We don't hide the microphone. It's right in my face. And I think that's where it belongs. <laughs> right, right. Because it gives you that quality. It gives you good. Fighting with. It, yeah, and I, I need to. I always prefer audio, good audio to uh, good video. However, yeah. uh, the Yeti, uh, Yeti is worse if you're off mic because it's a condenser mic. It's going to get a lot more room tone. You'll notice if you get close to the condenser, the blue Yeti, uh, it will not sound so echoey. So right. you can get, there are shotgun mics that are highly directional. I don't think they're that mm -hmm. good. Um, okay. I, I, you know, you this mic you don't have to have right in front of you. You can have it a little off to the side. You could have it a little bit lower. It will be on mm -hmm. camera. It's pretty hard to, to use. I'm, now it's below my face, so my face is fully visible. You can see the mic, and I sound fine, right? Right, right. Yeah. So you can you can play with it that way. And these are good-looking mics. I mean, they're not they're not ugly. So right, um, right. Audio Technica makes a pretty good dynamic uh, mic. The ATR series. I use a twenty five hundred. Those are pretty good-looking as well. So I th I would suggest now you make sure in the Yeti you're using the cardioid the heart shaped pattern. I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I figured you were doing that, and you speak into yeah. the logo. But the, mm -hmm. the Yeti, to mm -hmm. me, is not a great mic because of that issue. Now, the nice thing about the Yeti is a USB mic. And the problem with the Heil is it's not. So you'll have to get, they're not expensive. And this is what we got for Johnny, a USB interface that goes from the mic into the computer or the, mic, or the yeah, mixer. And, and I've got one of those ready to go because they also sent me one of the lavalier microphones, but I just couldn't stand it. No, I, mean, I don't like the lavs either. That's TV sound. Yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't right, and, and, and I couldn't get it to I couldn't hide it. Yeah. It just kept sitting. I was like, yeah. I look goofy. Yeah. So I kept fighting the, the Hey, hold on. I got I to gotta do a commercial, but I will uh, talk to you off the air. So, and you, you know, if your videos are video focused, people may not carry so much about the audio, but I, you're right. That room tone echoey thing has always mm -hmm. bothered me, Brooks. And I don't yeah. like to hear that. And you don't hear any of that right now, do you? It's pretty. No, I don't hear. Yeah. yeah, and I was comparing it to um, when I did the whole room fort, you know, the the, uh, the fort, and I could hear that little bit of difference, and I've been fighting it, and there's people that have said, well, look, take that Yeti and turn that game way down, or turn it up, or mess with the high-pass gate, or, you know, muck around with your expander gate and stuff like that, and I've done all that, but there still just seems to be a little bit there, and I'm like, if I could just find a little trick. So you have an expander, way. that's good. That, okay. That's what an expander does is bring out background noise. Uh, if you okay. So if you have an expander, you probably have a compressor limiter expander box. Do. Yeah. I do. I do. You'll find that a dynamic mic into one of those is going to sound great. You're going to sound like boss radio. It's going to sound right. so good. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And you will say, oh, that solved it. Okay. I, I, you know, some of our hosts use Yetis, and um, I try not to be too dismissive but i i really if uh, i don't encourage uh yetis they're not terrible they're not great mm -hmm. and they have the problem of being a condenser mic and yes. that's the biggest yes. problem yes i'm actually sharing this room with my granddaughter i had to go through like a uh, nato binding agreement to be able to put <laughs> her playroom in here and she will sit in here leo and she will be coloring oh and you and hear that uh, you can hear that tap, tap, that tap, that's a condenser tap, mic, mic. Yes. That's exactly. why they've got Adele in that phone booth. <laughs> I don't want to be in the phone booth, though. I want to be like you. I want to yeah. have a beautiful view. Yeah. Because I think it has a lot to do with Your, my how attitude. you feel. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I'm not exactly. kidding when I said I hate radio studios because they're padded rooms. I don't like them. Mm -hmm. And they have mm -hmm. vacuum doors and double pane windows, and they really feel hermetic. I'm sitting looking at my car out the window right now. Uh, I see the sun. I see the trees. Uh, you know, I can come and go. This is my office. This is not a. Um, this is not a studio. This is an actual office. And I was in the, 
I was in and around the DOD for 17 years, stuck in skiffs. I like windows, Leo. I love I bet you do. Window. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> and I, you know, I want to work in a comfy uh, environment. So, and I, I, but I still want that sound. I still want that, you know, where it sounds like you're, what I, what I like with radio is it sounds like the voice, voice is coming out of nowhere. Right. Uh, right. It's just your voice. It's not great for a singer because it's not going to get all that nuance. But you're, but for voice, it's the best. And these Hiles are amazing. Well, they're good for my voice. I think listening to your voice, they'd be good for your voice too, because they 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 have a really nice response in the somewhere to the hundred to five hundred hertz. You know, the okay. kind of the 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 they're good for male voices. Okay. And you gotcha. sound like you'd you'd have that. You want to em you want to emphasize that that sound right there. <laughs> Well, you do have to be careful too, because if I'm too much like this, I'll start. You don't want to be like that, but you want that sound in there. You have to. I mean, it's actually interesting. You have to have some edge, otherwise it won't cut through. But you also want you want to. You know, it's like a good band. They have a nice bass line as well as a lead guitar. You want mm -hmm. the, your voice is the whole band. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I was sitting there thinking, I just don't have this right. I've done. I almost felt like the gentleman you talked to earlier who put the SSD drive in there was like, I've set this up wrong. I know what the problem is. It's a chair to keyboard interface issue. I did something wrong here. <laughs> and it sounds like it was a mic selection issue. <laughs> that's what uh, that's what the IT guys call it, PEBCAC. Problem exists between keyboard and chair. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Chair to keyboard, chair interface, to keyboard issue. interface. Yeah. I will take a look at the Heil PR40. Hey, congratulations on 1800, Leo. Thank, Thank you. It's really nice to talk to you, Brooks. You take too. care. Bye-bye. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that jazz. 8888 Ask Leo, the phone number if you want to talk high tech with me. 888 827 5536. That's toll free from uh, anywhere in the US or Canada outside that area. You can still call, but you should use Skype or something like that. 8888. Ask Leo. George on the line from Van Nuys, California. Hi, George. Hi, Leo. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm just fine. A couple of questions for you. I'm fixing to retire pretty soon, both my wife and I, and uh, I'm looking to buy a couple of cell phones to replace some of the older stuff that we have. And, uh, you know, I don't want to spend a mountain of money. Uh, we're both Android users, so we're familiar with that. And also, the second question would be uh, to buy a laptop computer that I can use in retirement, uh, pretty much just for personal use and without spending a whole gob of money. If you want an inexpensive Android phone, I have to say I'm a big fan of the Motorola G series. The current one, I think, is the G9. And, uh, you know, it's my, I buy my daughter. My daughter goes through phones. You know how she's not that young, but young people are. They drop them. They don't. They don't like wearing cases and stuff. So uh, I stopped buying her $1,000 phones. The G9 is 238 bucks, And uh, the G9 Power goes, that's another problem, is young people forget to charge, goes for, it's, right. got, it's got a big battery, about 60 hours of battery life. Uh, decent camera, not a, it's not world beating. You're going to spend a little more money if you want to get one of the phones with really good cameras like a Galaxy uh, S you know, 21 or um, maybe a Google Pixel phone. Those have great cameras. I mean, really good cameras. But if you okay. want an inexpensive phone with a decent camera, I, I think the Moto G9 is a great way to go. Moto G9, very good. Yep. Thank you. I do personally, I presently have a Moto G5. I've used it oh, for three or four years. you know all about it. One of the reasons yeah, I like it is that it's a, it's a pretty much pure Android experience. Motorola doesn't put a lot of weird stuff on it. Samsung does, and I'm not fond of that. Uh, they're inexpensive, and I think they're very well made and really nice Android phones. Yeah, good. Well, you're already used to it then. Keep it up. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. We'll yeah, see. The other thing to watch for there will, you know, the 4A, which is uh, Google's Pixel phone, is very is a little more expensive, but very good if you want a better camera. And they should be announcing a 5A in the next few months. So that might be something okay. to watch for. And that's a truly pure Android experience. And I think the Pixel phones get the longest life of updates. That's another issue with Android is most manufacturers will only support with updates for a few years. Uh, and that varies. Okay. Motorola is pretty good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Oh, oh, very good. I thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. And the second question about I'm looking for a laptop computer that my wife and I can use in retirement. Uh, neither one of us are power users. Uh, so, you know, just looking for something like that as well. So I and this isn't for everybody. Uh, are you going to be on an RV? Are you going to be traveling around? What is the what is, All what of is the above? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for that reason, Internet access may be ske sketchy, right? And yet, most of what you want to do, you're going to be doing on the Internet. So Correct. for most people, I recommend uh, for simplicity, security, and, and cost, I recommend uh, a, a Chromebook. Not a Windows machine, but a Chromebook. Acer, okay. The new Acer Spin uh, is really a great Chromebook. They just, I think it's down about 350 And they're just fantastic. Aluminum body, high quality. Uh, but because it's Chrome OS... It's limited, so it kind of depends what you want to do. If, if if what you want to do, you can do with a browser. And for most people, email, surfing, buying things, all the stuff they do is in a browser. Chromebook's fine. If you want to, if you were a photographer and want to do photo editing, or you wanted to do video editing, something like that, it might be not uh, as suitable. Okay, I might have put a little finer focus on that for you. I will be doing a bit of consulting in retirement. Uh, Previous to a, a, a job that I've had previously, they've asked me to come back just as a consultant. So writing reports, you know, that kind of thing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So with a Chromebook, the way you do it, and frankly, most companies would prefer this, you do it on in the cloud in Google Drive with Google Docs. They have a very competent word processor spreadsheet. They have a PowerPoint clone. They have an office. It's free. And because it's in the cloud, you're never at risk of losing any data. Plus, it makes it really easy to share it back to the home office. You say, yeah, here, let me share the Google Doc that I just wrote up, the report. You don't even have to email it. So Understood. I think that's a good way to go. We use Google Docs at my company as our official company email and word processor and all that. And uh, it seems to work quite well. So it's not as pretty maybe as Microsoft Office. It's also not as complicated. Uh, right. And it can yeah. read and write Office files. So it's not like if they send you an Office document, you're not going to be out of luck. You'll be able to open it just fine. And by the way, Microsoft Office is available for free on the web. So if they say you got to use Word, well, fine, you use uh, office.com. Okay, perfect. All right, great. Yeah, I think that's a good recommendation. The only issue is going to be your internet. There are some Chromebooks that uh, support uh, 3G networks, LTE networks, uh, you know, cellular data. That might be a, a solution. But I suspect in an RV, you're going to have to figure this out anyway. You might end up getting a, a dish or perhaps uh, one of those MiFi cards that acts like a, a Wi-Fi adapter that gets this, the data from the LTE network, but then allows you to hook up everything. And so that may be the way you do it anyway, instead of getting it in the, in the laptop. Very good. Well, hey, thank you so much. Hey, where are you going? Well, I'm presently in California and moving back to Washington State to be up near my, my kids. Good. And, uh, you know, after that, it's just, I guess, kind of wherever the road Where? goes. Oh, I love that. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great retirement. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous. Thank you very much, Thanks, Dale. George. Thanks, George. Bye-bye. Take care. As long as I have to keep buying my daughter's cell phones, I won't be retiring <clears throat> anytime soon. <sighs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, we're going to take more calls at 8888-ASK-LEO. I'm still looking to solve this BIOS problem. Now, I think the guy was in the chat room, so I'm wondering if he got any help from his uh, from our uh, chat room. IRC.twit.tv, if you can help us out there. I'm sure there's something we can do to make that work. Remember, this is the guy who has the Acer, or, I'm sorry, the uh, Dell Inspiron desktop. He put it in a... a, a SSD, an M.2 NVMe SSD, and he can't get into BIOS all of a sudden. The system will boot, it'll run off the spinning disk, he can't see the SSD, and it won't get into BIOS. That sounds to me, honestly, that sounds to me like a uh, an issue with uh, the install. Like maybe he shorted something out, disconnected some wire, right? Take out that drive, see if you can get into BIOS. But if you've got any other solutions, I'd love to hear from you. Leo Laporte. The Tech Guy. Leo Laporte, The Tech Guy. Here's a suggestion from Demos. He says, I've run into this on some older systems. 
they may have a slot for an extra drive, but they share the same controller, so you can't use both drives at the same time. You can either use the SATA drive or the M.2 drive, take out the spinning drive, and see if you can boot to the M.2 drive. Interesting. Worth a try. 88, thank you, Demos. 8888 Ask Leo. Let's talk high tech. Michael on the line from Los Angeles. Hi, Michael. Hey, thanks for having me on. Thanks for calling. Um, let me see if I can let me see if I can explain this good enough to you. Okay. I have a Galaxy tablet. Yep. S5. Oh, did I just lose you? And and. Okay, go ahead. You got a Galaxy tablet. <clears throat> so on my tablet's fine, but when I when I connect my Bluetooth headset to it, <clears throat> the quality is. You're cutting in and out. Unfortunately, I'm only. I heard the quality is and then nothing. Hello, Michael. Uh, so he told Kim that the quality is bad when he connects to the Bluetooth headset from his Android tablet. Hmm. Interesting mystery. Not sure exactly why that would be. Uh, you know, obviously you've, you've done probably the thing that uh, I would have recommended, which is remove the device and reinstall it. There is, Bluetooth has, unfortunately, um, a number of different, what they call profiles. And it may be that you're using the wrong profile. And it may not be that you have a choice. It may be that you do not have a choice. The Old Bluetooth headset profile, which was designed just for head, you know, those, remember, that? do you still see people walking around with little blue lights blinking in their ear? Those little headsets that people used to walk around all the time. That's designed to be low bandwidth and is not very good quality. You certainly wouldn't want to listen to music on a headset. That's what they figured. And so that headset profile is a very low quality, low bandwidth not good enough for music, good enough for voice. You want to make sure that you're using a profile suitable for music, like A2DP or Aptex. There are Bluetooth profiles designed for stereo music. Uh, e and the problem is these days, a lot of headsets now have good headphones. They would be fine for listening to music. In fact, a lot of headphones come with headsets. So if it's an older Samsung tablet, and it may not, it may have been designed in an era where there was no such thing as Bluetooth headphones, that the only thing people ever used Bluetooth for was talking on the phone. If that's the case, then you'll have, you, it's never going to sound good because it's, it's, it's using the wrong profile. It's using the headset profile. I don't know if there's a way to tell the Samsung that what you're using is not a headset, but see if you can. You know, it, it, what you're using is, Headphones, something higher quality, it should choose a profile that's appropriate for higher quality audio. It's changed a lot. Uh, and I think that's part of the problem, especially with older devices. Uh, yeah, we've lost him. I, I don't know what happened. I, maybe his battery was dying on the phone. 8888 Ask Leo. Fred's on the line from San Pedro, California. Hello, Fred. Hey, how you doing, Leo? I'm well. How are well, you? I'm Long time listen, uh, first time calling. So um, I, I'm in the market for a uh, whatever is deemed, and I, I know you have a specialist there. You know as much as he does about. Well, I, I, want that. I would never claim to know as much as Scott does, but go ahead. Uh, no, I, I know you'd never embarrass him in that way. So, but uh, I, I want the best OLED TV on the market right now. I'm imagining it's that LG model, but the, the, what I'm really going for is the clearest, crispest picture I have for live sports. So OLED is a good choice for live sports because it's refresh time. Uh, is fast, faster in general than LCD, although LCD TVs have gotten better and better. The best for sports, frankly, is the old plasma or the even even the old CRT tubes because they don't have a, a latency, they don't have a refresh time, and so they could really, they didn't have any motion blur. I think OLED looks great for sports, and I watch Formula One and stuff that's really moving fast on there, and I think it looks great. I have an LG, and I know Scott for a long time has recommended LG OLEDs. 
However, I should point out that in the most recent uh, big uh, HD TV shootout, uh, Sony won. I think you would. Oh, is that right? Yeah, but I. But you know what? You would do fine either way. Let's put it that way. Um, so yeah, in the I know, I in know. the 2019 uh, uh, shootout, the HD TV shootout, um, it was an LG C9. That was because the 9 is from 2019, so it would be a later version you would probably get. But in the following year, Sony won. So either one is going to be fine. Now, when we're, when we're talking about cost effectiveness, would it behoove me? I mean, I might have a, a not the highest quality, but if I go back a year to 2019. Yes, that's fine. I'd probably go to 2019 yeah. for a cheaper price, and it's probably yes. just as good. Yeah, you get last year's TV, you're going to be, you're, you're going to save money, and it will be just as good. There hasn't been that much improvement. There, in fact, the panel will probably be the same panel. It would just be the electronics in it. Now, I have to say, um, and you probably should read this, uh, the shootout uh, scores and everything, because um, they do score on motion. And the Sony was a winner. The AG9 was a winner on motion. And that's what you're caring about with, with, the, with the sports. On the other hand, the ga best gaming TV was the LG. So, <laughs> And that's also very high motion. So I, I think it's pretty close. Let, 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 me, let me get into the critical portion, and that's the cost. If I go Sony, we're talking four grand, maybe. Yeah, probably. And then, and then the LG 2019 model, maybe a bit under three. Grand. I think you can get it down to 2,500 or even 2,000. Yeah. How big do you want it to That's be? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That might be the way to go, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, the, you would not. I think like, I've been sitting looking at a four or five year old LG OLED for the, <laughs> the last four or five years. You will not feel bad. Believe me. That is amazing. It looks like you're looking through a pane of glass. I've been wanting to OLED for a long, long time. It's the way time, to go. So, yeah. Uh, very excited. The, the last thing is I know Samsung has a competitor with OLED that's rated pretty high. So what do you think of those? Don't confuse Samsung's QLED with OLEDs. So right. that's the first thing. The QLED is an LCD. Um, right. I haven't seen Samsung's OLEDs. Of course, I think Samsung does a good job. Uh, but don't confuse Samsung's QLED with an OLED. They just started selling OLEDs this year for the first time ever. So right, right. I would I honestly stick... I mean, look, I uh, Samsung looks great. I have Samsung TVs, and I think they're very, very good. Uh, I haven't. I actually have a, a Samsung... Uh, I thought that... Is that an OLED? No, I guess it's not. I, a Samsung that just looks fantastic from some years back. But I'm, I think if you're going OLED, I'm going to... Um, I I will ask Scott though next time I talk to him, but I would say LG or Sony is probably a better bet. Samsung well, is I'll, I'll by by the way, Samsung will buy its panels from LG. Can can I give you, which is uh, everybody must know, this is an unsolicited uh, compliment that uh, you know I've been listening to you for a long time, and it, it's a pleasure to listen to somebody who is so good in their field and yet loves it so much. You know? <laughs> it really comes across. Thank so. you, very kind. I really appreciate it. I'm very, you know what, very Fred? I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I have a great job. So, <laughs> thanks to That's people wonderful. like you. Thank you, Fred. I appreciate thanks it. Enjoy that new thanks. TV. I, you know, you're not going to go wrong either one. So shop by price. Absolutely. And I think uh, I think you can now get. Somebody just put a link in our chat. Let me. Let me look at it. I, I think you can now get a, uh, I believe you can get an LG OLED for around 2500 bucks. It would be 55 or 60 inches, which is good. You do want big. I mean, uh, you know, I know, I understand budget's always going to be the issue, but you get the biggest screen you can for sure. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. More calls right after this. Yes, it's time once again for the Tech Guy Show on the Premier Radio Networks. Bob from Honolulu, come on down. Hello. Hey, Neil. Hello, Bob. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How, I'm going to be in Honolulu next month. How's the weather? I know. It's beautiful. It's always the same. Me up when you get here, I'll pick you somewhere special. Oh, yeah? I'm excited. I've never been. I've been to Maui. I've been to Kauai, but I've never been to Oahu, so I'm excited. I'll send you an email if you like. Sure. Sure. Yeah, Leo at TechGuyLabs.com. That'd be great. I'd love to get your your recommendations. Where on the island do you live? 
Oh, you live in Honolulu, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Are you coming here? <laughs> yeah, we're staying uh, towards the end of. Uh, we're staying right at uh, right at uh, Diamond, uh, towards almost to Diamond Head at the end of Waikiki. Yeah, uh, I've got a special place to take you when you come here. Nice. So I'll send you an email. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's a good, yeah. Yeah. It's Thanks, good. Bob. I'm from Rhode Island too. Are you really? Before. When did you move to Hawaii? Yeah, from Crest. Cranston. Cranston's where my mom and my sister live. I grew up in Providence, as you know. Do you know do you know Knightsville? Knightville? Knightsville is a section of Cranston, yeah. Knightville. I do not. My mom probably would. I, I'm not as familiar with Cranston. Yeah. Oh. Is it a nice area? It is, yeah. I grew yeah. up with an old Italian bakery right across the street. Oh, man. I, that's one thing I miss. Yeah, it was wonderful. I miss the old yeah. Italian restaurants uh, in the, on the hill, Federal Hill and the... Bakeries. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Same here. Same yeah. here. So how long have you been in Honolulu? Later this summer. Um, on and off since 83. I moved here in 83. I was an engineer, and then I ended up going to med school. Nice. Back east for residency, and then came back here in 99 or so. I've been here ever since. Obviously, you love I'm it. Out here. Yeah. I do. I yeah. do. I still miss family in Rhode Island, you know, just like you. Yeah, I do. I do. I was on the phone with mom last night. What can I do for you? Yeah. Same here. Hey, I got my wife a new laptop, the uh, MacBook Air with the M1 chip. Isn't that nice? Data over. What a good gift. I hope it is. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. It's a, actually, she bought it with her money, so I, I, I just hope it. <laughs> oh, oh, you're taking credit, though. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I like that. Nice job. <laughs> I bought it for my wife with her money. How about that? Right. So, uh, have you got it yet? I get some credit. Did it come yet? Oh, yeah, it's in front of me. Okay. It's in front so, of me. so, the first thing when you turn it on, it says, Are you transfer? Would you like to transfer data from your old Mac? Exactly. And that will do it. You'll have to connect. Yeah, you connect it together. Go ahead. Or if I don't have the right cable. Oh. That's the problem. Yeah, is the Mac yeah. really old? Yeah, 2014. So all it has is USB, and it's got something that looks like a mini USB or something on it as well. I think it'll do it via Wi-Fi, won't it? I, it could, but that's the other issue. I found a USB cable, and then I have a little adapter to to uh, convert it to uh, USB-C. <clears throat> got it all hooked up. Here's my creation assistant. Yeah. And it ran, and uh, ran for a while. Then it said, you got 20 minutes left, and I was like... And I oh, was yeah, that's normal. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> this has been a problem f from day one with Migration Assistant. I don't know why Apple's not fixed it. I my sense is it's like it's not fixable. Otherwise, they would have. So uh, the last time I did this, I did this with my wife uh, transferring her data over. Uh, it said, you know, it'll be four hours. It was There was a lot of stuff. And about a day later, it still said there would be about four hours. So I said, well, the heck with it. And I stopped it. And it, it got almost everything. I think sometimes what happens, it gets stuck on one file. Um, mm. If you if it said, how many minutes? 15 minutes? Well, so, initially it said three hours. Okay. And then an hour later, it said 20 minutes. Okay. And that, then an hour later, it still said 20 minutes. Yeah. I would, I would let it go the rest of the afternoon, you okay. know, for a few hours. Be patient. And if it doesn't move at, after a few hours, then just quit out of the migration assistant. And I think if you look at the new Mac, you'll see most of it got over. I, my sense is it gets stuck. There's like one file I can't move or something like that. And it just doesn't move on. I got it. Can I ask you one more question? Yes. When I um, start up my Mac, I've got a Mac mini, uh, a, a new one. And uh, when I started up, it loads a lot of extra stuff like Cisco and whatnot. Yeah. And I try to go to preferences and, you know, see where that's coming from. I can't find it. Yeah, this How is... I get, it, yeah. get rid of all the garbage it loads. So there are a couple of ways to do this. When you go into preferences, you'll see for you there's log on items. Uh, and you can right. see uh, those are items that get started at login. But it's not the only place those can get started. There's a number of folders with startup items and they're in the library now you have several system several libraries on your system there's a library folder it's hidden but it's in your home directory there's a system library folder at the top level and then there's another one in system library so there's there's three library folders inside those library folders there are a few different folders that can launch things there's one called launch agents uh, launch demons 
there are a number of places it can hide. I would stick. I would at least start with the login. And then if there's something you know, like the Cisco VPN startup that you know it is in there, but it is getting started up, then look for that particular thing in the library folders. And the you know, there's a number of I I I let me see if I can find a, a support article from Apple that tells you all the different places startup items can live. They can live in a lot of different places. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, because there's there's startup items that are kernel extensions. Um, there, so the safest way, of course, to do it is to do it from the law, the system preference pane, the login. But you also want to look in launch demons, launch item, item, launch agents. Uh, there's a startup items folder. <laughs> and the thing is, they're all hidden away. In fact, one of the reasons Apple doesn't show you your library folders, they don't want you messing with it. So to, to find your library folder in your home folder, open finder. And then under the Go menu, when you hit the Option key, the Option key, it'll pop up. You'll see Library. And then let go of the Option key, it'll disappear. So <laughs> that's how you get to the Library folder. They don't want you to get in there. So start, so Library, Startup Items, System Library, Startup Items. Um, there's Launch Demons, and they're in the Launch Demons folder. And there's Launch Agents. They're in the Launch Agents folder. I think that covers there it's I think there may be other ways you can do it with uh, with some services but like launch control if you're comfortable with the um, terminal are you comfortable on the command line at all yeah yeah there's a command called launch control yeah launch control is what starts these things l a u n c h c t l abbreviated if you type launch okay. control space list It'll show. It should show you everything that's in launch control, and you'll at least be able to figure out where that is. And you can. Uh, it's probably in the launch agents folder. Okay. Got there's it. also extensions. Okay. There's cron jobs. There's logon scripts. There's a lot of other things. And the thing is, you got to be careful because you could, in theory, I guess, remove something you need. So you don't want to just kind of willy nilly take out everything. But if you see something starting up, you like that Cisco thing's driving me nuts. Those are the places to look. And you'll see. It'll say Cisco in the in the file name. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks, Leo. My pleasure. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I don't know. They make it a little more complicated probably than it has to be. Um, and, and it's, it, you know, there's somebody in the uh, Discord, Wizardling, says, I never trusted Migration Assistant. When it works, it's fine. When it doesn't, it's awful. So there are other ways to do it. If your wife had been using Time Machine, the Apple backup system, then you could just take that drive and move it over and re restore from Time Machine, and that will do the same thing. That's probably the ideal system. I don't use Time Machine, so uh, I usually have to do it by... You can, And there's even ways to do it by hand. I mean, <laughs> as you can see, there's a hundred ways to skin that uh, banana. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number <laughs> if you have a question. Actually, we're almost out of time. Never mind. Forget about it. I'm not going to take any more calls because Dick D. Bartolo, Matt's Maddest Writer, is coming up next with a gizmo. Stay here. You know, when we first discovered synthesizers, we yes. were prone to overuse them. We play disco for uh, Mr. Dick D. Bartolo. He is Mad Magazine's Maddest Writer for decades. He's also our gizmo wizard or gizwiz. Hello, Dickie D. Leo, how are you, pal? Show 1800. That's how I'm doing. Whoa, that's, oh, that's great. Yeah. That's a lot of shows. 225 days of nonstop listening, if should you choose to go back in time. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, it's very funny because I think we just did Gizwiz 1833. No! So, well, you're getting I there. <laughs> you'll, you'll pass us soon because you're doing two a week. So uh, uh, Yeah, we did five a week for a long time with the Gizwiz. Oh, my. Well, absolutely. That absolutely. was nuts. So Dick joins us every week with a gizmo or a gadget, something I will probably buy. I'm not so sure. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, so you were talking about microphones earlier with a couple of your listeners. Yes. And you know there are professional mics for broadcasting, and then there are special mics that uh, attract <laughs> the gadget. <laughs> Anything with LEDs in it, Dick's going to like it. <laughs> I, I know. Oh, okay, so it, it's a karaoke mic. It, ha it is covered with bling, all it, right? It is bejeweled. Beda it is bejeweled. It is bejeweled. <laughs> Bedazzled. Yes. 
Yes, exactly. So what's interesting about this is how much mo- how much profit could be in one of these things? I bought this on Amazon two weeks ago for twenty five dollars, twenty four ninety nine. So it's a karaoke mic and it has LEDs built in and it's covered with bling. It looks like someone threw a mirrored ball at a wall and then took all the pieces <laughs> and glued it on the mic. Uh, it's and has it's little- suitable for you know Beyonce or something. I mean, it's a very very fancy microphone. Yes. Yes. Well. Monday, I get an email from. Do you have a five below by you? No. Do you know? Do you know about five? Is below? it like a five and dime? What is it? it, it five below. Normally, everything is five dollars. No, we have a dollar store, so five. Oh, below. okay. Yeah. Well, okay, but five below, they they have things that are out, slightly outside the range. So I see this microphone on five below, and. It's six dollars. That's five so, above. I'm sorry, you can't sell that at five below. <laughs> well, I buy it. Six dollars. Uh, yes. Oh, but that doesn't of, that doesn't have the bling on it. It doesn't have the bling. But so it apparently is the rhinestones almost, are quite expensive. <laughs> yes, yes, it's nineteen dollars cheaper. <laughs> so if you if you have a five below nearby, and, and it's totally it's identical. All the buttons are the same. The only difference is on the bl- the one with bling, there is a push the button and it will oh, distort. Oh, I need oh, that. Oh, oh, okay. okay, okay. That's got oh, well, a little echoer in there. Yeah, well, no, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. So this isn't just this isn't just a microphone. This has the karaoke built in. No, what what it is is you have to get get your own app. Get your well, own you, app, man. Uh, it's blue. It's <laughs> blue. You get your own <laughs> At app. Six dollars. You expect us to have an app? What are you crazy? <laughs> but Leo, it's Bluetooth and rechargeable. Oh wow. So that's why for twenty five dollars I thought, oh, that's not a bad deal. And then when I saw the six dollar one, <laughs> I, I think I I can hang my own uh, mirrored both. ball on this. <laughs> for Dick has written also, an, an expose on all of this because it's shocking, shocking, and it's shocking. On, do you hear me? <laughs> it's on his website. Gives gambling, with, gambling. It's in, there's, I, there's gambling here. No. This, uh, if you go to the gizwiz.biz, G-I-Z-W-I-Z.B-I-Z, and click the button that says the gizwiz visits the tech guy, you'll see a link to both the uh, inexpensive and the expensive version of this microphone. I think you want the, the bling. I, I think you do, too. To tell you the truth, I, I got the black one because it's more professional. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's real when professional. You, when I show up with this, they go, oh, that flashing LED light microphone is black. He must be a professional. <laughs> it's very professional. Now, uh, <laughs> actually, if I could put my Twit logo in that flashing LED, it might be pretty professional. Oh, what a great I think, idea. I, honestly, I think I saw that on Fox News the other day, but I might be wrong. <laughs> So, okay. so does it do any other voice effects besides the echo? No, the 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 uh, the, the six dollar one just does a little bit of. Oh, it's not even working right now. Like a, a voice, like a Darth Vader. No, oh, all it does. It comes is with like applause. Well, it now comes with five seconds. Now you're talking. <laughs> I, well, okay. I want that. <laughs> oh, okay. But but it's only it's only like three seconds of applause. Oh. You need more. I you need, need more. A That's not enough for me. No. <laughs> no, no, no. That's it's a basically it's a Mister Microphone. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. Exactly. Right. Well, I'm glad to know that's still around. The kids still want those things. I think so. Gizwiz.biz. is while you're there, click the button that says "What the heck is it?" It's a contest to guess whatever this gizmo or gadget is. It's a close up picture. He doesn't make it easy, but if you can, you're in the running for an autographed copy of. Mad Magazine. Actually, there's only six Mad Magazines for the right answer. There's 18 for the best dumb wrong answer. And you're playing for August Mad, which is the uh, Gagzilla King Cough issue. (laughs) And I have 20 pages of material in that. What? It should be called the Dick D. Bartolo (laughs) issue at that rate. I wrote all the King Kong takeoffs. Oh, so this is all the King Kongs in there. Exactly. Wow. And some Godzilla stuff in there. You deserve some credit for that because that meant you had to actually go see all of those King Kong movies. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. So which ones did you parody? 
Uh, I parodied the one, the Dino De Laurentiis one. Okay. Which was the, the last one. Yeah. I did the... Oh, it wasn't original. the last... Oh, my friend. Oh, that's right. Oh, no, no, my you're God. Right. There are, there's one this year. There's a new King Kong movie every year. You're way... Those are... Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. there's King Kong with with Godzilla. Yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, oh, that's so funny. I hear an echo. I think there's a microphone. Just Turn on. that microphone off. <laughs> Gizwiz.biz, and don't forget, Dick has a very good podcast he does with Chad Johnson. Soon to, soon to be episode 1833. He's just a little bit ahead of me. And you can find that yeah. at gizwiz.tv. Thank you, Dickie D. What are you doing Thank for you, Memorial buddy. Day? Anything? You, you... Uh, probably just going to run down the boat, and maybe Dennis and I will just have lunch. It's kind of traditional stuff. in New York. To yeah, exactly. Go out Absolutely. in the boat. Do they have a parade yeah. or anything? No. No. Well, uh, I go up to the Soldiers and Sailors Monument on Memorial Day. Oh, that's have nice. A little Place a wreath. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Very exactly. nice. Yeah. So I'll go to that in the morning. Oh, that's great. Th thank you, Dick Bartolo. Okay, buddy. All thank the best you. to you and yours. And uh, oh, we're out of time, I'm sad to say, but I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks to our musical director, Professor Laura, for spinning the discs. Thanks to... Uh, our phone angel, Kim Schaffer, for answering the phones, getting you on the air. But most of all, thanks to you for listening, for calling in, for listening in. We really appreciate it. Thanks to the folks in the chat room, our team tech guy and the Discord server. I couldn't do it without you. Thank you very much for being here. I'm Leo Laporte. Uh, I'm your tech guy. Have a great and safe Geek Week. We'll see you next time. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. -T, it stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.